<laughs> I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. Like a doll's eyes. I love this town! Hello, city! Oh, uh, but I, I am Bob. Don't uh, do Kobe. it. Ugh. Did it work? <laughs> Didn't work this time. <laughs> She's Kim. I'm Kim. I have She's a look of utter disdain right now on my face. That's okay. I'll <laughs> shrinkle my nose in homage as well. Uh, this is Tony. And uh, we are City of Geek, and we're in our first podcast of this. Well, second second podcast of this year. Uh, we did well, our, technically third because that one was split into split two. Split two, yeah. <laughs> uh, first time we're getting together after the new year. That's true. Yeah. Because we, we recorded worst, that before the new year. Yeah, yeah. And put it up on the first and uh, the fifth because we we talked a long time about our favorite movies. God, that that second one is just basically the Cody scream cast. <laughs> 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 So, sorry, sorry. Okay, new sub- new subsidiary city of geek podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the Cody the Cody screencast. I'm down. Let's do it. And whoever do I it. remember who it was. So somebody was like, Oh, I agree with Bob. I thought Detective Pikachu was That was, was, that was Jennifer Lovely. Oh, Jennifer. Hi Jennifer, yeah. you're completely <laughs> fucking wrong on that one. <laughs> but thank you for being like the only person who listens to us. Jennifer is my sister in horror. Like I uh, appreciate her opinions. Uh, greatly, and I appreciate that she <laughs> chimes in on our website to make me feel heard as a fellow lady. <laughs> is, is this? Are we uh, fan servicing? Like, yes. are we flagrantly fan servicing? Yes. Right I think now? we mentioned. We're probably fan every, servicing every, every to because least, she's the only person we know least, who consistently listens. At least one fifth of our, uh, at least one fifth of our of our <laughs> of our listening public, we're we're pandering to them right now. All one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Jennifer, we love you. She's radiant. Her cat is adorable. <laughs> but we're, uh, but we're, we're. Uh, it's January. It's the new year. So we're looking at the next couple months of releases as we do every every quarter. Uh, mm-hmm. Looking at what we look forward to, what we don't look forward to, we have no idea exists until we look it up today. And it's going to be all the Christian it. movies. That, um, uh, there's a couple of those coming up. <laughs> Um, not as many like outright ones as we were used to. I think those usually come out later in the year, but they they typically will dump them out. That's when like uh, the next next season movies come out too, right around August. Yeah, really? that's it seems to be. There's Is there a one, reason for there's that? There's like one on, on that I noted for this time. Because they basically basically what happens in August is everything dies in that. <laughs> in that yeah, it's a slow it's a yeah. slow period. It's it's kind of the dog days of summer, so I, most of the time you don't. But have people still go to movies. movies. Yeah. yeah, but they, there's they have summer releases. off. So yeah. mm. that's when people catch up and they kind of slide in these other. Well, it is funny because that's actually War Room was actually number one. In, uh, a movie in America one, one for one week back in 2015. That's gross. Ugh. Sinister Two was one, was number one in America once. Uh, see, I, but I could see that because uh, when there's nothing playing, people do enjoy going to horror, and the first one did well. I think people had higher expectations. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't, really, don't, don't want to get into a full Sinister, sinister Christian movie. No. <laughs> I actually saw them within days of each other. Oh. I saw both in theaters. I remember because I saw the first Sinister... Sorry, Bob. I saw the first Sinister in theaters by myself. And uh, I remember being a little unsettled by that. And leaving the theater... I texted my ex. I was like, "Uh, if a demon named Bagul takes me away, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> and he was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Don't worry." Meet Ethan Hawke is gonna run off, and Deputy So and So. I mean, no, that I, I'm fine with <laughs> either one. Yeah, either no, no, or. The, the, the first one I thought was fantastic. Uh-huh. I didn't really care for the second one. I thought much. the second I one. I need to rewatch good. it because I get a lot of positive responses. I maybe I, need to. I need to rewatch it because when I saw I it in theaters, seen one. I, I you haven't seen one. I haven't seen one or two. I will say it does a very, very good job of playing with expectations. I think it actually defies them in a lot of ways, and I and I thought that Sinister, honestly, Sinister Two was actually very good. Uh, Sinister brought back uh, was with the beginning of the new Ethan Hawke songs. Yes, the Hawke songs, yeah, the Hawke horror songs <laughs> too. Yeah. But he's done, wasn't uh, he in the first Purge? I forgot about that. He was, yeah. It was, he's it was, been a handful of horror films. He was in that films, and, and like... the Purge, and then later on he went to do First Reformers in horror, but mm-hmm. he came back for a bunch of stuff. Like he's he's uh, in Boyhood, but of course that was filmed over thirteen years. But <laughs> he's he's kind of like coming back, which is nice because I think Ethan Hawke is a, a really actor. underrated actor. Yeah, that it was kind of like people were like, oh, he's just a pretty boy, but he's yeah. actually really good. And he's actually moved. He looks really good now. He does. I think he really moved 
into but it. But he's matured into his features, I yeah, think, to a great so. extent. I, I think I like him better now than I did when I was younger. I was watching, like, Reality Bites the other day, I was like, he looks kind of weird here, you know? Like, him and, like, Ben Stiller looks really weird he's on, too. <laughs> they, 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 they ben all, Stiller still looks really weird. Yeah, but he looks he looked more weird in 1994. <laughs> Didn't we all look weirder in 1994? Oh, yes. I was one. Fuck you, Cody! <laughs> But uh, we're gonna look. You were a you were a very lovely little zygote. I'm sure <laughs> you were the we're cutest gonna, little zygote on the planet. I was. Just we're we're gonna look at January, February, March. Uh, but mostly <laughs> theatrical releases. Maybe a couple things are Netflix, Shutter, Hulu, things that have struck us otherwise. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll see where things go, and hopefully things. Uh, hopefully, the what we liked in this will be good movies, and what we didn't like will be shitty movies. I'm kidding. Hopefully, everything will be good. I, I, I really root for every movie to defy and be good. Um, Out of context, Bob Roots for Dinesh D'Souza. Well, maybe not him. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's, that's, that that guy. reading my statement. Fuck that guy. Uh, so we are, it's January 12th as we do, so we're 15th as we put it out. Uh, so some things have already come out, but let's go ahead and go back in time a little bit and talk about some of the movies that have already come out. Um, there's only been a handful starting back in January 3rd when we had the release of The Grudge. Speaking of horror franchises, I <sighs> Yeah, that's about the right response. Kim yeah. and I saw it. I don't know if it you guys it. pretty much were like, it was so shitty. I'm like, I was originally going to see it with Lauren, and I'm like, she had to cancel, and we had, we were rescheduled. I'm like, do you want to go see The Grudge, or we can just like hang out and play a video game? So we did that. You made the right choice. Yes, definitely. If you've seen a Grudge movie, you've seen this movie. You've, and I've seen all of the Grudge movies. God, so. <laughs> God help you, dear sir. I've seen a couple of them. but They're I, all I, the same thing. I, yeah, it's never been my favorite franchise. I yeah. think I even said that in my review. Uh, it's it's never been my favorite franchise, and it's just very meh. In the movie itself, I wanted better on Nicholas Pence because eyes of my mother and piercing. He has a great look, and that look mostly comes through. Just the story itself is. is you know what nice. I would like? This is my wish for 2020. I wish more directors would be directors, and more screenwriters would be screenwriters, and less directors would try to write their own goddamn <laughs> scripts. Because you know what? <sighs> I feel like I'm progressively more and more underwhelmed by directors who are insisting on doing that. They are two completely separate professions. They are two different artistries. And it's not to say that you can't do both, but maybe you shouldn't. Because I know he wrote Eyes of My Mother. I'm sure if he wrote the other one, look here. I believe he wrote The Grudge. And he wrote, he did write The Grudge, and he yep. co-wrote that with someone else. And he wrote, he co-wrote Piercing, uh, and Piercing was from a, also an adaptation. As a director and a writer, I don't like to direct my own stuff. Oh, yeah, he direct, he adapted um, piercing from Ryu Murakami's novel. But, yeah. And you know who doesn't need to usually direct their own stuff? Everyone else. Your mom. Listen, <laughs> my mom would absolutely be phenomenal at directing her own stuff. But like Spielberg, he doesn't need to direct his own <laughs> things that he writes. No, he doesn't write. He just he's exactly because he's a director. Even, even if he's fallen out, Tim Burton kind of pushes off. to like Terry Usually, Carol Thompson's like, "This is my story. You go write it." No, I just. I feel like any more and more when I'm underwhelmed by a, by a, a horror film, or, and I see that it's especially franchise stuff, and I'm like, oh, because the director wrote it. Yawn. Next. Uh, but coming out the same week uh, was on Netflix was Dracula, which has gotten a lot of great responses. Mostly it seems to be people have issues with the third act. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched all of it yet. I've watched the first episode. I love it so far. Apparently, so uh, to apparently on. I might be getting a new boyfriend. Yeah, uh, Dracula is totally your boyfriend. <laughs> I, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm very excited to. Is watch. that the one that's on BBC? And BBC the... and Netflix. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited uh, to meet my new boyfriend. Well, so I, I've watched the, the, the first Kim episode. Harum, it's, it's time for a new member of the Kim Harum to be brought the in. The Kim <laughs> Harum is never... It's never... We're going to go back in time. It's a hungry be beast that never finishes <laughs> devouring. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's, but it's not going to be this Dracula. It's going to be the Dracula from fucking Blade. That, that lame one. <laughs> Or maybe it'll be Udo Kier in a smart suit. <laughs> I don't need to watch that one. <laughs> uh, but so far, I love Dracula. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Um, but I'm going to leave everything there. I was so hoping for a so snow day there. tomorrow so I could watch it. But <laughs> Seattle is epically failing, and it was sunny earlier. We've been delaying our snow. There's no snow. The snow is a lie. Just like the cake. Um, and wow, back. what a timely hip reference. <laughs> yeah, years ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know, that's a... Uh, Ice, ice baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
Uh, and then January 10th, we back to theatricals. Uh, we had actually several things came out this past weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. Biggest thing for horror was Underwater. Um, yeah. Which didn't do years. very well. But which it was, was disappointing really to good, see. Though. It was. It was From good. what I've seen on it, basically, it was basically, uh, what was it like BP summons Cthulhu, pretty much? Spoiler alert. <laughs> I haven't even seen any of the plot this time. I'm just guessing. I thought it was really fun. It's, uh, they don't waste a whole lot of time on backstory, but they don't need, yeah, you you (laughs) dive, literally dive right into the action. (laughs) But it's, it was fast paced. It was entertaining. Uh, acting was good. Uh, everyone's playing a stereotype, but they each bring enough to it. I could have done, you don't want to, well, I didn't know going into it that, that TJ Miller was in it. Uh, He could have been cut. This fine. <laughs> and so getting out of it, I then had to donate to a woman's shelter because I try to not support his movies. I really don't like T.J. Miller. And that was before he had all that shit come out. I don't yeah. like him just in general. But he's really left out of the publicity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know he was I honestly yeah. had absolutely no idea. That's probably why he's on that. I forgot. Movie. And then I went back and I watched the trailer. And yeah, you know, he's 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 briefly he's like in a second of I think was like maybe is that is that T J Miller? And like is that T J Miller? And then it's like no, and like when you go back, you know it is, and it's like uh. I'm gonna betray my Gen X geezerness and say I don't know who this human being is. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah I'm glad. He was on. Uh, I'm gonna Silver die Valley happy on this one, Tony. Uh, Dead, he was in the Deadpool movies. If you saw, yeah, him. he was uh, the he guy who ran the bar. Oh, okay. in Deadpool. Um, I was surprised they put him in Deadpool 2 after everything. I thought maybe they'd write him off and then hope he's on the third one. I, that's why I'm kind of curious to see if they stick with him going into number three. Because they, I... the, they filmed the second one after all that yeah. came out. So I'm really surprised they didn't just... And that's hard for me because I, I really, really enjoy... Sorry, Cody. I really enjoy the Deadpool movies because I really enjoy Deadpool. Uh, and, and again, that's that one of those... Uh, you donate to a women's shelter after you see the movie. Uh, but yeah, talking about uh, going back to underwater. Yeah, it was, it was fast paced. It went really, really fast, really strong. Like, um, like they completely cut the entire first act of exposition, which is great. Like, which this is isn't a spoiler because it, it starts in this way. And every review mentioned, like every single review I read a- after watching the movie said. Cutting the first sack was great. Cutting yeah. the first sack was great. Cutting the first sack was great. Because no one cares. No, no one, one cares. wants expedition this well, week. And you didn't, and you didn't need, <laughs> you it. Don't need it. I thought as it went on, the things you needed to know came out in in the moments they needed to. Yeah. And there's hints to some... I mean, there's just I little, think there's some stuff that was cut. Uh, yeah. They feel like, oh, this is about to hit off this way, and they stopped it, you know. But, but I, I felt like in general, it, it... You know, it's funny, because I saw Poseidon... Uh, and I saw an interview with uh, the... I can't remember who the lead actor was in that. Um, and the director. Uh, what, the, the remake of Poseidon? The remake of Poseidon. Uh, uh, Kurt Peterson Russell. Directed it. Yeah. Kurt Russell was, Kurt Russell was among one. many other... Uh, yeah, the, but that's the, an ensemble cast. Though. Yeah, the, the, the pretty boy. I, uh, oh, anyway, yeah, I, don't I can't remember who it was. I haven't seen it, so I don't I, know. It was, I was taking, I book, I was taking this class in New York, uh, this film class, and they would show, screen a movie, and then bring in somebody involved, usually an actor-director. Um, and one of the things they talked about was, you know, well, we initially in the script had all of this exposition, but we cut it. And that was an instance where it's like, on the one hand, I get it. And the other hand, I was like, what? There's a, there's so many characters and there's so many things happening. Underwater did it right. Anyway. Yeah. I think if you're not going to explain it, the cast needs to be smaller rather than a fucking ensemble. If it's a huge ensemble. And I mean, this was a reasonable. Six people. Yeah. Yeah. But Yeah. I'm not going to say more than that. Uh, uh, no, it's, yeah, a, it's really solid. It. It's really solid. And Unfortunately, I needed like seven million dollars in the box office. Kind of sucks, but yeah. it cost like eighty million. And, uh, oh, did it really? Well, yeah. Well, but it's been they shelved for like three two years, years ago. Years. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And then we oh. called. Yeah, they filmed in 2017. Which is why TJ Miller was in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, that because makes they more sense. Because it's around. And then uh, I, I, Amy Simon noted that, that that's when they were filming it. When it started to come out. Um, <laughs> Why was it on the shelf for so long? Kim's uh, about to go Disney. dispute her charge to the woman's shelter now. I don't have to feel bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, 20th Century. It was made by Fox, and then when the mm, Disney stuff happened, mm, and then okay. this and that. And Fox is notorious about putting stuff away for a while. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah which is why New Mutants finally. That's that's 
Oh next man, I can that yeah, that's finally. April, so I can't finally. believe they're actually even gonna I'm do it glad at this point. Yeah. But that's uh that's next uh preview podcast. <laughs> New Mutants is an old different Stay era. tuned. Yeah. I thought it was coming out in We're March. getting off on a tangent, uh, well, but it's maybe, a close maybe, tangent. maybe it's March. But it'll be it'll be when we get to it. We started recording time. earlier so we can do more tangents. That's how uh, that works, right, Bob? Uh, yep. yeah, that only did um six million uh um, part of but, the master. But compared plan. to uh Technically a Christmas release, but expanded over the tenth was nineteen seventeen, which did actually a really great thirty seven million dollars. Uh, because it bumped uh, because the Golden Globes bombed, probably get a bunch of Oscar noms. Yeah, uh, thirty seven is pretty tomorrow. good for right now. Um, that anything it bumps Star Wars off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it probably isn't uh, going to take that much. How do you? But yeah, that? It, it bumped Star Wars from the top part. Nineteen seventeen expanded, fantastic film. Uh, it's getting you know a lot of people were seeing, it, which is wonderful. Um, but we talked about it last. Uh, yeah, my mom and I are going to go see it actually Tuesday. So. Um, also expanding was Just Mercy uh, with Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx. Oh, that's oh, the yeah. one where he's the defense attorney. Yeah. In there. Yeah, that, was, that, was that looks really solid. It's getting yeah. great reviews. Um, I'm looking forward to watching that. I'll probably watch it in a couple of days. Um, any thoughts on that before we move on to a different movie? <laughs> no, it looks it, good. Cast. It yeah. looks good. Yeah. Great cast. And uh, timely. Uh, Timely conversation yeah. over the justice system and how fucked up it is for people in my, minority setups. Um, then we have uh, the also expanding this week was the remake, uh, not, the new adaptation of Les Miserables um, using the 2007. How many? 2000, oh, sorry. Ed. How many are I thought? Didn't I thought this came out already? Yeah, it came out. Uh, it ex- came out on Christmas from limited release and expanded this week. It's expand more. Like release. I thought it came out a year ago. <laughs> this is how. Oh, I- there was a BBC one that came out. Okay, last that's year. what I'm thinking. This of. is the new French one that's based around the 2005 riots. I think so it's, oh. a, it's a modernization. Oh, I think you mean okay. less miserables, good sir. <laughs> that, well, that, that actually sounds more intriguing because I I was like this less didn't- who. Less miserable. Uh, isn't he the guy who made the guitars? <laughs> uh, Less miserables. Yeah. I need right. more wine. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not only for uh, for Golden Globe for best foreign film last year. Uh, didn't win. I don't think. I think. Right, right. So the Golden Globes are yeah, not are crap. I mean, it, but, uh, let's buy an award. I mean, uh, what? Essentially, who yeah. said that? The go- <laughs> hey, you know, Pia Zadora was a Golden Globe winner for the best newcomer in '81. <laughs> When, oh, because they were still doing that award then. I yeah. believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also this past weekend was the release, this should be an interesting reaction here, of uh, the straight-to-video, the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's a... Uh, that's what I have to say about that. She is flicking off the, Jesus flicking off the air. I didn't even know that was a thing. I know yeah. that the guy who did the Ghost of Sharon Tate is going to do say- a Ghost of... Was I thought it was, was it, it's not the same guy, right? It is the same it guy. Is the same, of course it's it's it is. It's Daniel Farron who made Halloween 6... And uh, medieval horror. It's all uh, that the had new to medieval, be said. Uh, medieval murders, and now he's doing the uh, the murder of Sharon Tate, which which notes that it might not have been OJ. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's hard to say that. Uh, it's absolutely OJ. Um, and then, uh, funny, I'm right now I'm watching American Crime Story. OJ's going to be on Twitter about to fucking sue us. <laughs> he's got a little bit of a little uh, I mean, if if I did it, this book, if I did it, it's a, um, but he did a. Uh, but I watched the trailer for that today, and the next thing where Nick Stahl might have been the serial killer, this cross-country killer who might have been the one actually killed her, um, or something like that. But <laughs> I don't know. It looks shit. I'm going to watch it as soon as I can watch it for a dollar or less. I'm not going to pay. Yeah, I'm not paying for that one. I paid one dollar for Sharon Tate, and that's enough. <laughs> I waited for Sharon Tate for 100 Nights of Horror. I'll wait for Nicole Brown Simpson for 100 Nights of Horror. Man, ugh. I, just, I feel icky. Work, but, I feel yeah. icky even talking That's about why, it. Well, yeah, it is. Well, it's closer. I remember this. In a, and, this is the thing. In a very sort of sick, sick way, this is a grand Hollywood tradition of exploitation. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the seventies, we had a whole spate of. Gee, of course, you know, we we like reviving things every couple of decades. So in the seventies, there was a spate of, you know, Manson documentaries, Manson, Manson pseudo docs. Helter you know, Skelter, films. though, at least was legit. Oh, like I'm God. still waiting for my Casey Anthony musical I pitch. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, also, you said that line in Rocky Horror when um, uh, when Brad says, "Help me, mommy." He's like, "What's the last thing Casey Anthony said?" <laughs> I mean, my, at my, least my he hasn't. Has to be stopped saying. At least one. he hasn't <laughs> done. At least he hasn't done the Jean Benet one yet. Yet. Oh yeah. Yes. Just you just gave him the fucking idea. Somewhere Daniel Farrell was like, "Ooh." Uh, oh, I then I do expect some kind of royalty. Jean Benet was actually a demon, and they had to exorcise her back to her. <laughs> brother had to kill Jeez. her for that, yes. The, um, 
Yeah. Uh, what's weird is that because he's always these, these alternate, he gives alternate these, reasons. Like, it, you know, honestly, if he's going to do it, it should be something different each time. It should be like, uh, like fucking, um, like, JonBenet Ramsey, demon, you know, like, something else, werewolf. <laughs> Somebody else was a vampire. And just keep going with it, like, um, what, what's a good true, cr- like, the DC sniper, he was a fucking <laughs> werewolf. That's why. Well, oh, Kaylee Anthony would fit, would fit for werewolves because he had to put her in the trunk. And <laughs> I know. Well, I know. I am now divorcing <laughs> myself from this. We're going to move on. Let's move on to something happier. You'll notice I'll how that, much um, contribution I've made yeah, to this yeah. corner of the conversation. That same day that that came out, um, the new season of Anne with an E came out completely out of sight of our genre, but it's really fucking good. <laughs> well, we're geek, and that's geeky. I don't know what that is. Uh, Anne of Game Gables. Yeah. Uh, it's a three season episode it th- it's canceled now unfortunately but yeah. three seasons from Netflix and it's so good ah. it's so sweet it's so fun uh, but it does cover a lot of things that made me think about how uh, talking about uh, talking earlier about um, how badly something was dealing with uh, well what were you talking about dealing with uh, Indian affairs oh uh, I was talking about the fact that I have been re-watching Dr. Quinn yeah Madison before we started recording <laughs> and uh, yeah it was before we started recording and why <laughs> <laughs> Because I wa- because some of us were children in the nineties and not fetuses and uh, or zygotes. It's it's comfort food. I, I my dad was too busy getting laid for me to watch it. I was like twelve, so um, but no, I I, it, I don't know. Hallmark's been running the reruns, and I started watching them the other day, and I was like, oh, this is a sweet show, and it's not about any of the crap going on in the world right now, except some of the stuff is. Uh, but, but we separated out. The so same way some of Anthony was yeah. about things that, that, that make sense now. I'm about, yeah. And it, it's held up better way. than I thought it would have. Um, it, particularly, I was a little worried how some of the Native American stuff would be portrayed. But it's held up a lot better than I thought. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a, still a fair dose of white savior. But, you know, it was the 90s. We were all about that in the 90s. <laughs> And uh, sticking with TV, moving on there. Uh, on TV on November on, on January twelfth is be the new Stephen King adaptation of The Outsider, I uh, have which I haven't read yet, but I'm reading the <coughs> previous I have it set trilogy, to yeah. Uh, DVR. No, no. Yeah, I have it set to DVR, so I'll, I'll report back. It's on Mid that. Mendelssohn, and it, that's that's enough to get me to watch anything because yeah. oh, he, yeah. he picks his he picks his uh, script really well. Well, the, and he's the, a great performer. The trailers have looked really intriguing. And uh, I went to read the book beforehand, and I realized it's actually a sequel to the Bill Hodges trilogy, Mr. Mercedes, Finders Keepers, oh. and uh, so I'm reading those right now, because I had okay. missed them before. Um, then I'm going to read Outsider. Then I'm going to watch the show. <laughs> it's a process. Yes, I'm just yeah. going to watch the show. Fair it's enough. Fair. I'm sure I can watch a show without reading the books, but... I, Presumably, that's, yes. just, that's me, the way I do things. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Stephen King said he likes it, but he likes everything. Uh, does he? Not, the, not but, the original Shining. Yeah, I was going to say, does Most he? things, most things. But he even admits that. He's like, yeah, I like... If it, he even admits that he's really easy to please when it comes to film uh, and TV. So, um, moving back into the theaters, uh, January seventeenth does have a couple interesting releases. <laughs> um, let's just start with the one that's going to be the first big bomb of the year. <laughs> Do it all. Oh, oh, yeah. Three times. oh man! <laughs> Cost one hundred and eighty million dollars. That just looks like a money four. suck. This <laughs> is why Robert Downey Jr. cannot be allowed to pick his own roles. Because what the fuck? What is his accent? F- I fucking it's like five different accents. It's like, and it's and it's like, and a little bit of Batman. This is like he's oh, like yes, he's I like, talk to animals. <laughs> he's what I, it's what I imagine like um, like if Tony Stark hadn't like snapped. But like if he'd had like a like a massive stroke, <laughs> and that's his fever dream until he dies, is him in Doolittle. First of all, you already got it right with the Eddie Murphy Doctor Doolittle movies. Why mess with perfection? <laughs> all five of them? Yeah, no, he's only in the first two. He's only so. in the first two. There's yeah. five of There's them. There's three direct video, video, direct video with his daughter or something Good like Lord. that. Or the Rex Harrison one, where you have Rex Harrison. Attempting to sing. If I could <laughs> talk oh, that's, to the animal. But that's Rex Harrison. That's, that's he, Rex never Harrison. he never sings. He never sings. He just talks. I've oh. got accustomed to oh. her face. Well, he sings better than Oliver Reed does in the same era of musicals. Oliver Reed can't sing for shit. Hey. <laughs> Oliver Reed, all he has to do is fucking glow her, and that's good enough for me. And everyone's panties just fall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are um, you speaking from experience, Bob? Yes, I love my Overeed. <laughs> <laughs> your panties are falling Who out. doesn't love our Overeed? <laughs> no, so what's I, the over-under on Robert Downey Jr. getting fucked by the gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure under because this is a PG movie. No, but the porn parody will probably have it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, do <Doolittle>, everyone. <laughs> 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 Tell me that effect. 
<laughs> something like do something. I don't know. I'll leave it to and you and Wood Rocket. The <laughs> hashtag for this episode is Doctor Do Everyone. <laughs> Well played. I, I do not want to see the wood rocket for that. That's all you, Cody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this wood rocket's really good at doing abomination fucking horror. <laughs> almost horror movie looking things. Like uh, the when they did. Bomb. Like the I haven't dog. actually seen them and seen photos of them. But uh, or, uh, oh, let say. me show you just. Uh, I don't, we can keep talking. We can keep talking. I'm going to show you just the face yeah, we of can this thing. roundly ignore you. <laughs> Doolittle Please. looks like the biggest piece of fucking shit. Oh, oh my god. I'm so just, I cannot. I have a ticket. I have a ticket for Thursday to so can see his abomination. Doolu al- <laughs> Doolu Doolittle almost looks like a parody. That's kind of what I it's thought. It's really close to. Like, it's, it looks it, like it, it virgins on it. Which I mean, given the you know, given the fact that you know, but it also has. I mean, the the in terms of the cast of of people doing either cameos or voice work for one of the animals, well, it rivals like in... cats. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> really. Like maybe that. some more, old, maybe old, maybe old, more than one way, too. <laughs> You're right. It probably won't be as horny as cats. <laughs> Did you see but cats? Probably not as good as cats. No, cats but is now I awful. would be willing to since I have Regal Unlimited. <laughs> so now you can go see it. Now yes. I'll go see it. Yeah, it's not running anymore. I'm I was going to say, I don't think it is, but it I want to go see it. Are they going to be reissuing it with new improved uh, I effects. they already did that. Yeah, they already uh, did it. I saw my, my version was the slightly improved effects. There's still a lot of fucked up effects. <laughs> Dogs or not cats? <laughs> Stop staring at me, Judy Dench. <laughs> uh, uh, but no yeah, like where you are in the room, uh, Judy Dench. Is their scary. hands and feet confused me. Yeah, that's the weirdest thing. Their hands, their feet, their like, scale, their horniness. Their scale changes from scene to scene. Me, weird. Yeah. wow. The. Uh, Okay, so here you go, Kim. I this is, this is, this is uh, just the face. I don't. This is, this is I don't, Pokemon. I, I, okay. Okay, I don't know what this one is, you're showing, but could it be the Velociraptor? This is what's going to be in the nightmares <laughs> I've tonight. Seen, oh are you going to post that's this? That's kind of seriously terrifying. See, right? see, I know, right? Like, that actually borders on it being, like... That's, like, deeply unsafe. But see, now deeply you have to unsettling. post a picture to either our Facebook or our Instagram so people at home understand <laughs> what horror we are looking at. Yes. <laughs> Exactly uh, what the Cody horror is that is. Hashtag <laughs> Strokemon. <laughs> Strokemon. Let's move on. <laughs> but yeah, that's Do yeah. Little so, looks like shit. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Bad Boys for Life. The unwanted sequel for maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. That, more than that, right? At least. 20, at least. I think Bad Boys 2 was it 2013? So it's been 18? 20, I don't no, know. I've only seen the first one. I didn't like it. So I'm going to rewatch both of them and watch it. This Look, man, time. Martin Lawrence was never funny. <laughs> Will Smith was... Bad Boys 2003. I, okay. I can't take Will Smith seriously anymore since he became a Scientologist. Well, and but he so hasn't taken he his career very seriously. I was say, he yeah. hasn't had a good movie in a long time. Yeah, I was long thinking about it earlier. He, he's all charisma and no actual movies behind yeah. him. No, because well, I'm trying to think, what's but the last Gemini good Man, movie he did? Every time I, I think like of a movie, it's like, oh, wait, it was that flop. No, yeah, that flop. Yeah, he's had a lot of no, shitty flop. movies, but he never really gets the, I, the hit for it. I like, will say, I oh, too bad. If he was a woman, now maybe he would. If he was a woman, oh, right. uh, and his movie is tanked. Uh, I mean, Jim and I Man was shit. So Eyes and Sky, I didn't actually see. Um, I don't think anyone yeah, did. Yeah, they're like, oh, Will Smith's a bird. Right like, was yeah, shit. Crowd of Beauty was that. shit. Suicide Squad was shit. Concussion was okay. <laughs> Focus was okay. Mender's Tale was one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen in my entire fucking Which life. Which one was one of the biggest pieces of shit you've seen in your entire life? Uh, Focus. Uh, not a Focus. I like Focus. Uh, Winter's Tale and Suicide Squad. Oh, God, I forgot about. <laughs> Men in Black 3 was crap. After Earth, I'm reading a thing right now. Angry I was going to say, was yeah. Crap. Seven Pounds was crap. Hancock was crap. I Am Legend was okay. Yeah, that's the last one I can remember. Hitch, thinking. I oh, actually okay. liked. <laughs> uh, I never saw Hitch. Shark Tale, he was a voice. Okay. I mean, yeah, well, he actually, I like Hitch, like is Hitch is okay. Like Hitch is decent formula. Honestly, um, for me, the last movie... I mean, the original Men in Black I enjoyed. Yeah. What about Wild Wild Day. West? I like that for I as saw awful it. as it is. I saw it. Does I, that count? I, I, yeah, I think the last legit good movie without an asterisk next to it that he was in was Men in Black. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about the Ali one? one? He was in that one. I didn't like Ali. You didn't like I Ali? I never saw Ali. So that I can't I know, comment so, on. But a lot of people do like Ali, so that might actually be the last. That's still 2001. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, uh, uh, I Am Legend... A people, moment. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's... Actually, before you get... Honestly, I will stick up for that movie vigorously... Up until you get to the actual. Market. Had they gone with the? I think had the, they gone with practical. 
Yes. yes, we would be talking about that movie probably much yeah, closer. It's, it's to probably the closest movie. one to the book. First, and originally movie. they were going a practical because I had a friend who was cast as one of the weird vampire zombie things, and he was supposed to go to camp to learn how to do it. And another thing is, like they they really they scrapped a way better ending for it. Yeah, yeah. they kept it. that yeah. fucked him. I'm and like, they changed what I am legend means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's he's like, not a legend because he saved everyone. He's a legend because he's the fucking vampire killer. Yeah, he's, he's, that he's the movie, killing of the new society. That Spoiler movie, a seven-year-old book. <laughs> of, that movie has one of the best man and dog friendships in uh, mainstream like, Hollywood motion sad. picture. It does, but... I also really enjoy how they deal with his his fucking loneliness after yeah, all those was, years. Yeah. When you had to memorize Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Shrek is Will Smith. <laughs> anyway. Don't care. Um, also that week, uh, two small releases. One's The Wave with Justin Long, which looks pretty interesting. Looks really fucked up and odd. Uh, and you guys oh, yeah. Um, and then VHS, which is right up my fucking alley, where it's, uh, it's all in the style of 80s and 90s, um, you know, filmed in studio, your own home movies or stuff that's on, filmed in late night television, and I love watching like Found Footage Festival and Everything is Terrible and stuff like that, and it's about a, a kid who films over his parents thing with, but you see all the clips that he filmed over with, and has like a lot of alums from like Reno 911 and a bunch of other stuff, and that was huh. really fun. Um, I'm definitely going to check that out. From the oscilloscopes, you know, it's going to kind of interesting. Ooh, I've got, I've got one I think that's right after. Uh, for the January 27th, 24th? 23rd, oh. they are actually making something called Blind Eyes Open. This sounds incredibly in bad taste. A Christian documentary oh, diving geez. into the sex trafficking industry and exposing the darkness. Oh, God. Uh, highlighting survivors' <laughs> oh, transformation through Christ and showing Christ is the hope for all involved. Oh, yeah, I saw this on my VOD list, but I skipped past it because it has the Statue of Liberty and a flag on the front cover. So I'm like, I'm not going to watch and this. And I'm out. <laughs> I... I don't even think I'm going to do that one. I think even I think that's in bad taste. I wonder how they're going to blame Obama for it. <laughs> that's my question. You you watch that and tell me how Obama is blamed for sex trafficking. I kind of want to watch it now for that express purpose. Of course you purpose. do. <laughs> well, you go ahead. That's what, yeah, it's all you, but well, that's all you. If that was on the A-list, I would, might watch it. And later. again, but speaking of which, we're talking about another grand, long-standing exploitation tradition. Which is the Christian scare film? Oh, yeah. absolutely. They were more interesting in the eighties, though. <laughs> yeah, now they were way, no, way the sixties and seventies. Those sixties and seventies ones were legit. Like the the old Estes Perkel ones, where you would fucking get like, like if you didn't believe in God, you get get decapitated on a motorcycle and then get get like a uh, fucking hot poker up the ass from a demon who's behind <laughs> Jack Chick. Uh, <laughs> fucking painted uh, like a. Um, Stained glass window, <laughs> and I'm still waiting for my Jack, my Jack Chick uh, documentary. <laughs> When's that gonna happen? That motherfucker's life was weird as shit. Yeah, and they did that one uh, Jack semi parody movie uh, of his D and D tract. Um, but I didn't like the, the movie itself turned out kind of crap. But oh, the you know. D and D one. Yeah, but they made a movie out of that. They made uh, a fucking movie. Dark right? Dimension. Yeah. It's, it's, it, was, it was made uh, tongue in cheek, but it didn't really work. Like the humor wasn't quite in that right level you need to be at. Uh, I was but, hoping they were going to genuinely do it. That would have been funny. Uh, no, it was made by a parody group, but they they did it. It was, it was obviously meant to be winky, but they made it straightforward. But it, it just didn't quite land. Uh, but coming out theatrically, otherwise, that weekend is um, another horror film. We get a lot of horror this month. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the adaptation of The Turning of the Screw, The Turning, starring yeah. Kenzie Davis and Finn Wolfhard. Um, Which, uh, I mean, I love the story. Um, I'm curious. I'm. Uh, I'm a little concerned. But I'm trying to have no expectations going into it. Yeah, I'm um, afraid it's gonna be too direct. E- and the me thing that works about the, the previous too. adaptation, the innocence, is it's so much. What's it, so much white, ambiguity? What in it. Isn't is there, so, the yeah. ambiguity? Yeah, you the ambiguity a, is what makes it work. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. It is crucial to that movie's success. It's a psychological, a, a psychological drama, a psychological. Well, drama. And, and the sexual repression mm-hmm. and and the hysteria. I, I'm not sure if that's something that's going to translate quite as well in 2020. Yeah. Um, because a lot of it was very much dependent on the time it took place in. Uh, that being said, I mean, the trailer is intriguing. 
And Mackenzie Davis is a great actress. Yeah. Too, it's really sucked that Terminator didn't do so well because she is great in that. She's really great in um, the Otoli and uh-huh. Izzy gets the fuck across town and here's something else for her. Um, that, uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm curious like of how this is get people compare it to um, The Haunting of Bly Manor coming out in the fall. Right. Uh, using the same source. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, there's another Turning of the Screw adaptation coming out sometime this year that that might be like one of the, the Asylum style ripoffs. Um, uh, I don't fucking too much. I saw it popping up, but because it's you know it's in public domain, so you can, right, anyone so can it's... adapt Turning of the Screw. Uh, so if there's two other adaptations, might well have a cheapy company toss one out. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Fair hey, that's how, hey, again long-standing exploitation movie tradition. That's what Corman used to do, man. Yeah. Exactly. Oh wait, the studio's making a science fiction movie called Rollerball. Let's crank out Death Race 2000 <laughs> and make a better movie. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the case with. Yeah, but the turn. Uh, I'm looking forward to this turning. I'm definitely going to watch it. I'll be right there in the theater. It looks much more um, straightforward horror. Yeah. But it might need that for the trailer to get people in. Yeah, and maybe the movie itself might be a little more. Uh, I don't know. At we'll least find out. from the visuals from the trailer, I think Which, they're going yeah. much more straightforward. Children horror. Rightly shows ghosts. <laughs> well, and, and jump scares. There was a yeah. lot of jump scares, and 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 there were not a lot of jump scares. In I mean that again, it was it was a slow, subtle, um, slow burn. Slow burn, and and you were questioning everything. Even to the end, you were questioning. So, but on the plus side, director is Floria Sigismond. Sigismondi. She directed The Runaways, a couple episodes of oh. Daredevil, a couple episodes of Handmaid's Tale. So okay. that might come. Up I mean, I'm I'm in because it's uh, lady directors. I'm like rah rah. Let's and a let's lot of, do uh, this. Music videos as well. One episode of American Gods. So uh, she does have a good backing in that case. So we'll, we'll find out. The cast right. is I just, good. I, I love the story. More, I'm just. I, I hope it's more uh, the innocence and less. Um, Rennie Harlan's The Haunting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the uh, the awakening is good if you haven't seen that. So I think we talked about mm-hmm. that in the mm-hmm. underseen pod under seen episodes. It was yeah, said to be man. sequel to to the innocent and turned not to be. Uh, they ended up editing it and changing it the script. Uh. But it's I, I kind of see it still as kind of like this is Flora grown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, moving on because uh, it's still in January. Um, 24th also has the release of The Last Full Measure, which we talked about a little bit last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a the war, the Vietnam War movie with Christopher Plummer, Samuel L. Jackson, Bradley Whitford, Tom Holland. Um, been delayed a couple times now, and we'll see how things turn out. Like good cast. Uh, I haven't seen the trailer for months since the last time we did that podcast. <laughs> but good cast. Yeah, Coming back down the year put cast. it out, but we'll find out. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's not promising that's being put out. I was questioned immediately a movie that comes out in fucking January. The, the, that big of a cast. With that, that, with that kind of something like, cast. Something like Underwater or The Grudge or, or The Turning can do well now. But when yeah. you put out Doolittle in January, <laughs> or that, or, or the other movie here. Anything I, that's a pedigree movie. Even like, Serenity yeah. last yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Yeah. Michael yeah, McConaughey Don, yeah. and fucking... Uh, Matthew McConaughey? Yeah, Colin McConaughey. McConaughey. <laughs> Which also, he has a movie coming out the same weekend as well. Oh, yeah. The Gentleman. The Gentleman. From, uh, Guy Ritchie. <sighs> no, that's right. I forgot about that. I'm actually that's all you going, guys. Kim I'm actually going to be going to... Guy Ritchie. Uh, the, I'm going to be going to a previous screening. Oh, nice. You need a, you need a <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do have a So screen. look, that's oh, happening it's right now. Next, <laughs> but it's the same night. Are you, are you, are you, have you bought tickets to Color Out of Space already? Oh, no, but I'm going to. Yeah, it's the same night. And that's like... I, I already um, signed up for... The gentleman, uh, and then of course right after that I was like, God damn it, it's the same thing. <laughs> I unfortunately space. have to work when they're doing uh, color out of space. And they, uh, See, and it's not you know, I, which is the next thing is going to go after this. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, yeah, the gentleman, like, I'm interested in seeing it, but it does look standard Guy Ritchie. But hey, after Aladdin, I probably you could have stopped with Guy, just standard Guy. <laughs> we would have done what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, <laughs> that pretty much explains it. I yeah. mean, this looks like everything. It's got a good cat, and this but. is the thing. I I'm not a giant Guy Ritchie fan. I he's kind of a flatline director for me. Yeah, um, I think he, uh, he's better when he works with Matthew Vaughn. When he when he broke off from Vaughn, I think he's, he lost a lot. But but yeah, I'm. I mean, I, I you know, it's got a good cast. What the hell? This is the remnants of my Halloween. I'll uh, give it a chance. And then Tony brought on and mentioned the other big release for that week. Well, big for us. Uh, it's actually a one day screening. Then going to VOD in February. Uh, is Richard Stanley's Color Out of Space adaptation. It looks yeah. intriguing. Which some of our friends have seen and they fucking loved it. Yeah. Uh, Strange Eons. Woo. I mean, you had me You had me at Nick Cage, honestly. Yeah. Nick Cage, Richard Stanley. Well, after I Lovecraft. finally fucking saw oh, yes. Mandy and how <laughs> good. I mean, you can always play insane good. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I Yeah, I mean, and it, it's, 
it's indicative of this whole. I mean, Nick Cage has embraced genre and has embraced. He's embraced being a great. <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah, well, that that especially, but I part of it is just again, hey, getting back to a grand tradition of you know a character actor, you know throwing you know their gusto into um something that's normally considered disreputable and and less than a list which would be horror and genre movies you know which of course this is one and so it's another batshit nuts genre performance by Nicolas cage i i, I can get behind that shit mm-hmm. yeah and our friends over at strange eons radio do have an interview uh that they did with richard stanley after the screening of it at hb lovecraft film festival in portland back in uh, October. Nice. So if you listen to Kelly and Eric talk about it, it's the 36th episode, you can find them on, uh, wherever you found us, probably as well. <laughs> the search strange. God, I wonder how it would be interviewing that guy. Yeah, he, I haven't listened to the interview because I want to watch it. It's a good first. interview. <laughs> yeah, it's a good interview. There's no spoilers in the interview. Okay, because I go back and listen to it. It's been, I've listened to, up to the interview starting, and I'm like, I'll wait for the movie. <laughs> then I'll come back and listen to it. Because yeah. with, the, with, the book, with so. Richard Stanley, like, he could you know be completely articulate and fine. Or he could scream and crap his pants and then come back dressed completely like an extra. Which ah! is, <laughs> I have a Dr. Moreau, if you guys aren't aware. And there's a great documentary about that. that oh, yeah. Was one of I went to Lost, Soul, oh, on Lost Souls about the, the making of that movie from his point of view. It's oh, amazing. Uh, and if you haven't seen Hardware or um, Dust, Dust Devil, Devil, check those Dust out. Dust Devil. Um, mm-hmm. those are yeah. That's the movie about movies. the evil uh, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I couldn't not make the joke. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. You know what? Uh, but if you live in uh, wherever you wherever you're at, there's probably an indie theater playing it on or around the 22nd. Uh, if you live in Seattle, it's playing on SIF. SIF they have a, yeah. They're doing it on the 22nd at the Egyptians. There's a lot of space. Um, apparently, it's selling well from what SIF has been posting. They got some extra stuff going on. Playing, I think they're doing a double feature or something else. Um, and there's an interview with Rich, with uh, Stanley and Cage that they're playing along with it, so they're making an event out of it. Um, so check that out. I definitely will be going. I haven't bought my ticket yet, but I will. Um, the next weekend is January uh, 31st, which also has yet another horror film. Woo! Uh, this one I'm really, really excited for from the director's yeah. previous pedigree. Reddle and Hansel from it Alice Perkins. awesome! Yes, my God. Sophia Lillis, Alice Krieg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alice Krieg is enough to get me in there. And Alice Perkins uh, made... Black Coat's Daughter and um, I'm the uh, Pretty, I pretty thing. thing lives in I'm the, the Pretty house. Thing, yeah. I, yeah, I did nothing. I don't really have a huge amount to add to that other than I I loved um, the Black Coat's Daughter. Mm-hmm. I was absolutely captivated by it. I think it's it'll be interesting seeing him take what could be ostensibly a more um, bankable, established property, albeit a fairy tale, and seeing him like actually work within those confines somehow. It, it looks like it have a, has like a touch of the witch in it. Oh, like yeah. it, it's uh, when I first saw that was on the. The roster, I was kind of like, eh. And then I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, it's I'm astounding. in. astounding. And the I'm visuals, in. oh my god. Yeah. Well, I mean, if he does anything, yeah, his visuals, visuals are just on point. Even people yeah. who didn't like I Am the Pretty Thing has to admit that the visuals in that movie were stunning. And I love that movie. I know a lot yeah. of people didn't like it. Cause oh, I loved it. weird, but I liked the fuck out of it. I love Black slash February, however you may know it as. Yeah. It's a beautiful slow burn. Yeah. Um, no, his visuals are on point. It's weird to think that, like, yeah, of course, Osgood Perkins being the being the son of Anthony Perkins uh-huh. grew up with horror. Uh, and if you go back watching like, Legally Blonde, he's one. He's like the weird friend. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah, that's him. Like, yeah, they I have the weird, weird haircut. That. Or probably somewhere in the spectrum. <gasps> that's Osgood Perkins. No way! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! He, he, he tried to make a career as an actor before before he moved into directing with these awesome horror films. He's making. That's funny. I yeah. did not. He still does things here and there. Like, occasionally pops up as even the credits of things. Like, oh, what'd you know? Uh, huh. So that's going to be awesome. Also the week um, in wide release is the Rhythm section. Also the wait a couple times. Yeah. Um, with also from Serenity from last year. Um, you know, uh, Anne Hathaway uh, trying to find out who blew up her husband's airliner. Oh, I it thought looks... that was Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it is Blake, Blake Lively. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anne Hathaway's in something else that comes out I think next month oh, or something like that. I don't know. Fuck it. Get your shit together, Bob. Uh, but I don't think it... It looks kind of <laughs> shitty to me, honestly. But I might still... It looks it. like it's trying really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird band movie, man. <laughs> it looks like it's trying exceptionally hard. So I don't, I'm, I, I don't know. Now that I can go see movies unlimited, maybe I'll see it. Because I don't have that holding me back. But I don't know. I, yeah, I'm... I'm just not gonna fucking go see it. Yeah. <laughs> just I'm, straight up. I'm not Bob. I don't torture myself with crap that I know I'm just... 
Because, like, I know just Christian <laughs> movies. I culture I should, myself. I think we should dog pile on Bob right now. Yes. I think the guy who sees all the crappy Christian movies should pile on Bob. <laughs> I'm going to because I will at least see crap that's shitty enough that I'm like, I hate this. I can I talk about it. I admire Bob's Iron Man ability <laughs> to see just like weird yeah. fucking dramas and comedies and all that shit. I'm like that's why I, I sat through Brooklyn Bro- Mother was Brooklyn, which is a piece of junk. Oh god! Yeah, it's like Bob will go see shit like that. I'm like I'm not even gonna do that. Like, I've got an open spot like it. and it's the next thing playing. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't have the time. I'll go to on that Thursdays. Shit, like man. all right, this is what I'm here to see, and what else plays along with it. That's why like oh I want to see Uncut Gems like a lot, but I'm trying to have like a time that would do little. On Thursday, um. <laughs> I, I feel like I should see it. I just can't get excited about it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Kim does um, love her some Adam Sandler. Uh, also in uh, also in January, uh, coming out uh, to direct a video or Netflix, or you want to use it. Uh, there is Get Gone, which has um, Lynn Shay. So the trailer for that seemed pretty interesting. Um, I don't. Uh, What's your favorite There's, Adam Sandler movie, Kim? I hate you. And the fourth <laughs> season is Sabrina, which I've only seen the first season, so I need to get around to watching. Yeah, oh, shit! They got they made four seasons yeah. of that already. Four season comes out. Yeah, next fuck. Season, next I, you know what's this funny month. is that I started watching the first season, and initially I was like, "Oh, this is cool," and then the more I was watching it, I was like, "Is it though? I don't know." There's some unfortunate things in it, and then I stopped watching, and then I didn't feel like watching it anymore. So. Yeah, they, uh, I feel like that and Riverdale both didn't I really watch Riverdale. I, I <laughs> tried. I also watched season one that she didn't like season two. So These are stopped. two blind spots in my pop cultural education. They basically, try, you know, trying to make the Archie comic shit, you know, edgy. Well, I mean, they're, they, to be fair, they did they make did a version good... of the Archie comics that followed Oh, yeah. Out, but they're trying real hard to be like Twin Peaks, but now, but a teen show, yeah, but they, they, sexy. They really tried too hard. It's like the comics they did were pretty good, you know, when they did the Archie and the Apocalypse. <sighs> Sabrina lost me a little with the lynching moment. <laughs> oh, God. Well, no, they, there were some characters who were bullying her, and the at least the, the lead bully is African American, yeah. and she, like, has new, she, like, turns it around so they end up with nooses around their neck and it's kind of an unf- yeah it's unfortunate and Jesus then Christ. Some. and that already had me questioning and then it kept going and i was like i don't i can't tell if i should root for this show i kind of feel like it's like somebody should they obviously didn't have too many um people of uh african-american descent on there or anyone just being like hey guys maybe this is not what we want our show associated with." it's like hey look at these spooky ghosts we got they're in clan hoods and shit it's 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 that tone deaf where you're like did you i mean did you really not think about like yay you you cast somebody who's not white in a character part um did you not think about some of the visuals did you not think about how this is gonna look no you didn't cool I, I I should give the show another try. I just found it was funny. I was really into it when I started watching, and then I just kind of got soured on it. Yeah, like I I do look forward to watching the rest of it. But uh, as I noted in my review for Back Hundred Days of Horror, so much of it is Sabrina being the special one is like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do the thing that I shouldn't do, or I'm going to do the thing that you all tell me not to do, and I did it. So now everyone has to help me clean up my, my mess, and it happens again and again. And again, and maybe hopefully they fix that in the further seasons. Maybe it's, maybe other people have that note and they, they ran with it, but we'll find out. Well, um, Church of Satan got mad at them too because for... they stole the bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, various gods and this and that, uh, also coming on Netflix on the thirty first is a uh, short television series called Ragnarok, which is uh, it's uh. imported from Norway, I think. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. Watch show for that today. Uh, and it's set in modern times, uh, where a kid finds out he might actually be Thor, uh, and there might actually be hey. real giants who are masquerading as humans as well. Uh, and it's, it looks pretty interesting as as he starts to figure out who he is and who everyone else is. And um, looks as nice design to it. So look forward to watching. I that. believe Marvel has the rights to Thor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in February, uh, we've been to our second month. Uh, we start the we, month with yet another horror film. We the need one that Tony, pedantic man. Tony wanted to talk about uh, last time, but I, I told him he had to wait. Uh, from the directors of Goodnight Mommy, we have The Lodge. 
Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is taking forever to get. Out. I mean, I can't. You know, I, I really don't have much more to say about this aside from knocking over my glasses because I've had uh, two glasses of wine right now. Uh, it, other than uh, you know, this is a directorial pair that, even though not everything about Good Night Mommy is a home run, it's really well acted. It is super well directed, and it does a very, very good job of ratcheting up tension and discomfort. And so, seeing uh, these directors do that with a sort of semi-mainstream uh you know i mean alicia silverstone's in it for god's sake oh uh-huh. um, i didn't know that yeah and I, i'm very intrigued i'm very very one intrigued. thing i really liked about good night mommy is uh the twist at the end where they reveal that the uh mom has actually been still alive <laughs> uh, well, continue. i had to but actually no i really did like good night mommy and i'm like okay i did I, too i didn't yeah, even I know it, yeah. you know i didn't th- it, it had that that and this people do so much of this now with with horror movies um, on like like BuzzFeed shit and all that. They're like, this is the scariest movie. Seventy five percent of people who watch it can't get through it, and it's like, yeah, you, you you don't buy into that, but it also kind of like subconsciously builds it, and then you're like, this wasn't scary. Hey, right. another grand tradition with exploitation and genre movies. Woo! No, uh, yeah, I love Good Night, Mommy, and I thought actually with the twist of that, I thought that was pretty straightforward at the beginning. Where like. They, I think that was a movie that I felt that they knew everyone would figure it out pretty early without directly showing their hand for the people who didn't. Right. Um, that I thought they really played into that very well. So I look forward to seeing where the lodge goes, which the lodge is like the, from the basic plot is something we have seen before. Uh, but I trust them to do something new with it. Uh, and also the cast of Alicia Silverstone, Riley Keough, and Art Richard Armitage, Armitage uh, are all yeah. fantastic performers. And the trailer is really tense and really tight and... Uh, I look forward to seeing what they do with that. Um, but it'll probably be dwarfed by the other movie coming out that huh. week. Uh, Birds of Prey or yeah. the... Uh, the Emancipation the, of Harley Quinn. Yes. I was like, well, I'm sure the right words in there. <laughs> Fantastical Emancipation of the Harley Quinn. I have I absolutely fucking no desire to see this I movie. cannot fucking I will see it. <laughs> I will be your tribute. You I will see it too. So. I want to go see it too. Yeah, right? I am I dying mean, to see it. And this is a new... I hate a Suicide Squad. Well, the thing is, Suicide Squad is kind of a a shitty mess, except for Margot Robbie. Except for, yeah, she's fantastic. She is incredible in that movie, and it was one of those... So this is one of those wonderful, rare bits of wish fulfillment you get as a movie nerd, where you see a movie that just doesn't work on almost every level, except for one key character in the movie that is brilliantly played and is perfectly Uh, right. Viola Davis exists as Amanda Waller. (laughs) Yes, there there you go. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe yeah. she'll pop up. Maybe she will. I'm yeah. still not so okay. yeah. So I'm very intrigued. And, and the thing is also, and I mean, at at the risk of sounding, um, you know, like sort of, I guess, broadly generalizing in the reverse, it's directed by a woman. So uh-huh. you know, so we've got and a uh, great cast. And we've got As that a and a good a good cast. So uh, you know, who knows? We'll Anything that brings Rosie Perez back, because let me, I, I love Rosie She's Perez. Great. I love the way she. Talks. I just no. love her, and I'm glad I that want to talk to she doesn't animals, get. Like, I think parents. the credit she does, she is fun to watch on screen. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yeah, she, like uh, she's one of the people I watch. Yeah, everything. like and and Ali Wong too. Yeah. Uh, you've got a really great cast. Uh, I'm I'm totally in. I'm I'm very excited. Only re- you know, I'm just not excited about anything DC really puts out. I just <sighs> I'm. Super, I think for a large amount after Endgame, I'm kind of superheroed out. I'm not. I'm. I'm just like. <laughs> I think I've reached my. You reached your limit. I think I've reached my limit. I'm like yeah, your your saturation. Yeah, yeah, I'm saturated to the point where I'm like I kind of feel like, and like I never really liked DC you, movies. You know why I'm not saturated? Because this is a woman driven film. And I have not had that yet, so you. I don't. My cup is empty of women driven. I mean, I've had Wonder Woman. Yay. I thought that was fantastic. I loved it. Was there anything else? Am I, am I missing Yeah, one? that's pretty well, much Well, Wonder Woman 2, <laughs> duh. No, yeah, but, you know, fast color, but no one But I mean, but that. I think that's part of it for yeah, me, is that we have a slew, there is a slew of female-led superhero movies coming out this year, and I, for one, am fucking stoked. Yeah, this in the trailer, the new trailer that came out this past week is amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I admit that Suicide Squad had good trailers. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though what watched it was like, that's a good trailer, but the movie kind of looks like ass. This one, the movie looks great. The trailer looks great. Ooh, McGregor. Yeah. As Black Mask is going to be great. Um, like, 
the new trail wears like such a beat to it that it really works. Um, and also, well, like, and uh, I'm sorry, DC is they are letting more women direct their movies than than Marvel is. Marvel, than Marvel, Marvel. is so I, even though I don't think their movies are necessarily as good when they do it right, Wonder Woman. They do a good movie. But, um, as much, of course, not a female-driven movie here. But uh, as much as I didn't like Joker, that Tony I did, or the minority in this case, apparently because everyone fucking loves it. Um, yes. Either love it or hate it, but uh, that's a whole different thing. Uh, now with, uh, but the thing with the Joker or Birds of Prey now look like they're moving away from the DC extended universe and moving doing their own yeah. things. Can they get off Batman's dick though? <laughs> I don't know. Like Jesus, because no, Robert Pattinson is the new, coming out. It's now it's only every fucking villain there ever has been. Like the last week, they've announced they're asked the cast of the Riddler and. Uh, I can't even get blah, blah, excited blah. about that. And I'll wait till I see. My God, that's right, Colin. Uh, Colin, Colin fucking Farrell. Farrell's gonna be playing the fucking penguin. Yeah. I mean, I do like Colin fucking Farrell. Colin fucking Farrell. Farrell. Colin fucking Farrell. He's very. He's. I. Yeah. I like him. I watch it for him. He's a oh, my lucky charms. He's a fucking feisty motherfucker, isn't he? Sorry. Oh, we'll check. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Birds of Prey is going to be. It's going to be. I think it's going to be a huge hit. I think it's going to be really, hopefully, well received. Hopefully, um, it'll be good. Yeah, I really, really I, so. I need it to be good. I think we all need it to be. Good. Well, I also like on a personal level as a woman, you only get one movie to fuck up. You don't get multiple chances when yeah, you're dude, wearing... You don't get to be a Will Smith who makes... You don't. You don't. No, shit. like, women directors, gets, yeah. they only get to fuck up once. And and so uh, I, I need this to be good just to fucking prove to those dicks that women know how to direct and are awesome. I am rooting from it, but it is from the sidelines. It's not like I'll probably go see myself. But you know, I'm hoping was- it's good, and I hope people really like it. I was hoping Joker was bad and people would hate it. So Joker was bad, but people loved it. <laughs> uh, but amen, uh, brother. So between I'll uh, high five you on that one. Uh, so the force of next week being uh, the fourteenth, actually coming out, and um, there's two things that look really wonderful coming out on VOD or Netflix on the seventh as well. Um, first is Come to Daddy. Yeah. With uh, Elijah Wood mm-hmm. and Stephen Caddy. It looks fucking insane. Yeah, it does. <laughs> what is this? Uh, it sounds it's, like a porn, so uh, I'm kind of uh, in. Elijah Wood uh, plays a kind of a, a weird kid who gets a letter from his dad who he hasn't talked to in forever. His dad lives, is played by Stephen McCaddy, yeah. so you know it's going to be weird already. Awesome. Who, mm-hmm. who lives out in the middle of the woods and is completely deranged so he feels like he's completely about to get like murdered and you know cannibalized at any point but his dad has some sort of arterial motive and something weird going on um and the trailer doesn't give away all that much thankfully but there's a lot of weird color use a lot of weird um music use a lot of weird editing um so it looks like it's just yeah i'm in for that over yeah, the top no, that it, looks, it looks insane. bonkers and awesome um and I, I look forward to that and also on netflix is lock and key the long gestating Adaptation from Joe Hill comics. Yeah, oh, yeah. Great comics. I've read about half them, and I look forward to watching. Because t- they, I remember them talking about that as early as like 2009. Yeah, they made. There's this is like the third attempt. They made three previous pilots: one for Hulu, one for HBO, and now the one for Netflix. Um, and this one's the fun, finally the one that clicked, the one that locked into place. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> but the trailer me. looks great. The trailer looks like it's it's getting the feel of the of the of the, of the comics, which I need to go read the other half for. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I, I I don't have Netflix, though. I'm a Hulu. You're guy. the one the weird guys. I have both. Um, I, have, I feel like at this point I have everything. Yeah, exactly. Which isn't true, but also it is, including cable. And on uh, February 14th, there is a large slate of movies coming out to choose for your Valentine's Day. With your date, with you your I already day. have a Valentine's Day double ple- feature plan. Cool. I'm interested in seeing what... Uh, so, I why already don't you know, lead us into this? What wait, 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 wait. I already know what Kim's first movie is. What's my first movie? Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Fuck you, Cody! <laughs> no, it's First Lady. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> Before you get to Sonic and First Lady, uh, Kim, what, what, what's Smith your what's your double feature set to be? My double feature for Valentine's Day is going to be Fantasy Island yeah. and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Oh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, that's coming out uh, wide on that day. It's not on, on my list, but it is. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. That is my Valentine's Day double feature because it, it it's like, I don't know, it's all of the things I love in, <laughs> in a couple movies. Strange Wait. horror and... 
Like, wasn't Fantasy Island that one where they, uh, where's the show? We gotta yeah. Not when like Bloomhouse does it, but yes. <laughs> yeah, with, uh, like, with, like, with, with the It's a very like, Bloomhouse Fantasy Island. So they got the horror. little guy who's like, boss, the plane, the yeah, plane, the plane. The plane. I, I mean, like, I have to say, if you were going to make Fantasy Island into a movie, to me, this is the only way to do it. Turn it into a weird-ass horror film. Michael or, Pena, or yeah. says, uh, and I love, I fucking love Love him. Yeah, I have loved amazing. him for. Now, I mean, is this going VOD or are they actually this putting this? The oh no! Yeah, I can't play. believe you haven't seen the trailers I'm for this. Not, like everything I've seen. It's been for like two everywhere. Now. Yeah, because <laughs> it starts out with like it's one of those shows like on a fantastic island getaway. You get yeah, what you want. Everyone's like, cool, cool, and then it's like it's horror movie. And I was like, no, what? <laughs> and it, there's like it looks like a touch of hostile that's happening. I I don't know. Uh... I Maggie like Maggie Q, or Double Day, Double Day. You know, no, you have me a Maggie Q. I really like her. Everything about it. I am into everything about it. Um, it may end up sucking. I don't care. I'm still gonna watch it on Valentine's Day and live my best life. If Blue Mouse, there's gonna be some sort of interest in it, whether it's good, bad, or or good, good. It'll be something. I mean, the producers are are decent. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean anything. But no, uh, it looks it looks fun. It looks like it could be really really fun and that paired with portrait of a lady on fire so if it sucks it's a palate cleanser because portrait of a lady on fire is supposed to be absolutely fantastic uh i, I haven't seen anything on that what is that kim explain it portrait to of a lady on me. fire is i mean part of again part of this is going back to my love of female driven anything um but it, it is it french I think so. It's in French. It's, it's in French. It's not a French production. Yeah. It's in French. But it's 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 uh, a female written and directed by by uh, Celine Sciamma, uh, and it's it's been getting a lot of traction, a lot of buzz, and it's basically about a a uh, lady painter who is hired to paint the portrait of this noblewoman um, to basically entice. Uh, a future husband for her but she keeps spurning all of the other people who try to paint her portrait so she's posing as somebody else to basically get her trust and be able to to paint her picture in secret but they end up having this like torrid love affair um and so you've got some like lady romance and lady writing and directing and feature i i mean like i don't even know if there's any men in this if there are they're very very tiny parts yeah i don't remember like, any of no there's none in the trailer I the, so uh, i think cast it's list mc I, if they men. are they're not oh, they're like minor minor characters yeah, Guy de la plays at Le Salon. yeah <laughs> it's like so no. the dude who works at a, at, at, at a this shop. is this <laughs> is like this is this is female filmmaking with female actress well with female actors <laughs> Female actors, and and it is uh, everything I'm loving about certain types of cinema these days. So that's my double feature and for Valentine's Day. Our friend Carla Vikingstad from um, from Crypticon and other things. She saw it last year at the yeah. Seattle Gay and Love Lesbian Film Festival, which is her favorite movie last year. I've heard nothing but abs. Like it's made it made a lot of the top lists for people who've been able to see the uh, earlier release of it. Uh, I was really, really upset that I missed it because I, I have a feeling it would have made it to my top list if I'd seen it from everything I've heard, read, and seen about the Yeah, movie. I was really hoping that <sighs> no, yeah, you would get a screener. That way we can all see it before. <laughs> I, uh, I know. I need to go through my SAG screeners. I I don't have a physical one for it, but it's possible it's an electronic one and I have paid less attention to those. Yeah, fair enough. Because I don't like watching movies on my computer. Yeah. So. Um, also that week is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Actually. Yeah, the, the delayed but it's actually looks boys. pretty interesting. I am. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'll give it my time. I'll give it my I time. really wish that they kept the nightmare fuel design for Sonic. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't. Because really I'm so glad that. they did. They, I'm so glad. I'm not glad that they didn't. Because look, the movie's gonna be ultimately forgettable. But if you'd have kept that fucking monstrosity <laughs> as the hero, that has potential to go down in film history for like something the next like cats. It. The next cats. That came out. Well, become if they kept that, it would come out before cats. But I, can you do that many cats at one? I mean, like, how many cats is too many cats? You know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a cat. But I don't, you know, I don't think Carrie pop culture. Like he's I don't think the pop, pop pop culture collective has enough patience for more than one. That's like, why we have a few months. Actually, CGI uh, generated flop. I think Jim Carrey actually looks like '90s Jim Carrey. He's like he's actually. 
trying to make something interesting out of Robotnik, and so that gives you something. I don't think he's he's slumming it or giving a phone in performance. Or no, no, trailers. no. Uh, that that enough makes it interesting, and I think actually trying to make a decent good movie. What I like, uh, I like James Marsden a lot. It's, like ben he's good. utterly charming on camera. And this is adorable. what he chose to do instead of being a Cyclops. <laughs> he's adorable. He can't be Cyclops anymore. So <laughs> he's very cute. I think he's adorable. Uh, so yeah, I'm, and I think people should definitely if if you complained about the original design on the internet, you need to give the new one money because they listened to you, and they went back, spent like another like fifty million dollars, and delayed the month. They delayed it by three months, Which so is it could come out better. Fucking bullshit! You robbed I, me of my nightmare feel. You well, fuckers. it's still the original trailer is probably still there. So you can I feel it. like I know the other movie you thought was going to be part of my double feature. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, actually, I was going to say D- Downhill, but oh, well, wait, what about First Lady with <laughs> Corbin Burns? I, I watched the trailer for that yesterday, and I'm like. This looks like the funny people, the people at church who think they're funny making a movie. <laughs> I was gonna say after midnight because that also oh, looks. That's, yeah, that's yeah. VOD. I have my VOD list, but that's oh okay, I was gonna say that too. also looks really really interesting. I don't think it's getting a theatrical release, but hopefully it. Does. Um, I have it under my, I have it on my release list, so I don't yeah, it's, know. It's, it's that same day, but I have it in my. VOD I have it list. as limited, but I have it as oh, getting okay, a theatrical cool. release. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Kim, what is after midnight? Uh, so after midnight is uh. It's a it's an indie horror film. Uh, it's the same uh, director Jeremy Gardner who did The Battery. Fuck yes. Which I know, like if you've not seen The Battery, I think it's on Amazon Prime. Probably it is. Yeah. Yeah, and it is just it is to me the epitome of low budget filmmaking. Ten thousand dollars. But That's done it. done <laughs> utterly, utterly, utterly correct and. It, it is. It was such a surprise of a movie to watch. So, uh, but not just him. Uh, also awesome producers too. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the um, this is described as a mumblecore esque horror, uh, also starring Jeremy Gardner as a man whose girlfriend disappears and leaves a note as an explanation, and so his life kind of starts to fall apart, and he's haunted by something that's coming from the woods and attacking his house. Uh, I'm really excited for this. And if it's playing in the theater somewhere, I would also do a triple yeah. feature to it's, see this. The varsity probably would pick it up. It's like movie the varsity. Oh, yeah. Play. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now, the the producers I mentioned are the guys from who made uh, The Endless and Resolution mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Spring. Yes. So the guys from The Battery and the guys from Spring working together to make a, a low-budget horror film. That's all we need I'm, to do. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm totally in. The creature so, design looks great from what I see I'm just posters. voting for a City of Geek uh, Valentine's Day date night all between right, the four right. of us. So. See, uh, after midnight. We're going to go see Sonic? We're down. <laughs> or, or after midnight. Am I the only... You know, I, I feel like I'm being a crotchety old man. I really give precisely point zero 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 zero. One six fucks about Sonic the Hedgehog. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, me, I'm, 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 I'm a, with you. And that's a liberal number. Other than I, I enjoy James Marsden, but even with my Regal Unlimited, I don't think I would go see it. It's towards the bottom of your list, right? Uh, uh, unless, unless the reviews come out and it is utterly, it's a, utterly shocking. It's a it's a like of shoving and satire. Yeah, it would be proportion. somewhere around the middle. Range. Is there, I think that it'd be landing somewhere in like 52. I just thought no. uh, you'll manage in, in me as like, why are we even taking seriously of why are we even taking seriously the notion of a movie based on a fucking Sonic the Hedgehog video game? Uh, but <laughs> get out, get off my lawn, kids. Before we talk God about the it. one other wide release for that uh, week, I do want to mention another low budget horror film uh, that looks butt nuts insane. Uh, that's it. We can VFW starring Stephen Lang, oh, George yeah. oh, that Wit, looks really good. <laughs> and a bunch of other uh, stalwart character actors. Fred the Hammer Williamson, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I love that. I purposely didn't say him, so 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 thank Tony you. would. Yes, oh, thank you. I love you, Bob. Thanks. There's a trailer show. I'm like, oh, this is Fred Williamson. Tony's in. Yeah, that's great. Well, and not just that, but also, um, oh God, uh, he played the heavy in Stephen Lang. Yeah, Stephen is Lang in that is too, and he's yeah. terrific. I mean, he's like one of those great. Kind of underrated trooper character actors, and seeing him just really. But Manhunter right. onward before I am right. afterwards. Yeah, absolutely, forward. positively. But the director of Bliss, which I haven't seen, uh, which and Almost Human, which is great. Um, Bliss apparently is really fucking fantastic. Came out last year, but I haven't seen it. Uh, the reviews so far, Metacritic, it already has a seventy-eight oh, after yeah. four reviews. Um, yeah, between seventy to one hundred. So the hundreds from Film Threat, so that's pretty cool. Hey. Uh, AV Club seventy-five, so 
Yeah. Everything about this looks great. Uh, where we have a bunch of uh, veterans hanging out at a VF, uh, but a VFW when a battered and bloody woman comes in and they kill the assailant and then turns out she is running from uh, some uh, drug runners and they like essentially assault her precinct 13 then. Um, and that's where we go from so, there. Yeah, we're talking about a siege movie. Yeah, again, it's a siege it's movie, fun. bloody. It looks bloody. It looks the same. It's an interesting again, shot and color use. A classic, long venerated tradition in cult and exploitation cinema. An action movie with a lot of like hardcore uh, character actor veterans giving their all. I'm down. Oh, and Bill Sadler. Bill Sadler's out. Well, there you go. Right now. Got Bill Sadler, you, Stephen Lang, Fred the Hammer Williamson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in for David that. Patrick Kelly's in there too. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Yes, uh, and I, I recognize the villain, but I can't find him on my list here. But awesome from, from there. Uh, so yeah, it has everything any any genre fan will probably find out of that. And the other wide release, going back to theatrical that week, is the remake of um, The Wave from a couple years ago. Another uh, Wave, uh, Force Majeure, uh, called mm-hmm. Downhill uh-huh. uh, with Will Ferrell and uh, Julia Louis Julia Dreyfus. Dreyfus. The trailer didn't really oh wow that's psych me up at all. Like I've seen it. the original. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the trailer's kind of like. I'm 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 really confused as to uh I'm I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, the trailer didn't do it. Like I, when I watched it in theater, I saw the trailer once for Bombshell, and the theater's like, Meh. "Was the reaction I heard from around the place?" I also just feel like, why does this? I don't know. Why does this need to be remade? Yeah, because just, everything that is a, a hit in a foreign language needs to be remade for slow American. And, and like I thought they're make Parasite now. They're I, I've been hearing Parasite. rumblings about that, and and it makes me so angry. There was a, I mean, in in his acceptance speech, he even said like, uh, made a comment about uh, get over that one get inch. Get over obstacle, it, yeah. Which I'm like, I, I'm preaching to the choir, man. Bong, you you preach it, brother. I'm with you on that all the way. I think that if Americans, because it's let's face it, it's Americans. Oh yeah. It's the the, yeah. the rest of the world doesn't have the problem with subtitles that we have. Nope. Uh, I don't know. They just need to get over themselves. There's a reason a movie made in its original language and its original everything. It is so 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 rare. I think we can pick out movies that are remakes of foreign films. And them remaking that also because it's <sighs> such an anti-capitalist message. Yeah, you know they're gonna mute that yes. for the American audience. I'm Absolutely. just I'm so hard pressed to think of movies that were remade that were superior to the foreign language version of them. Yeah, I, I can't would, think of one. I, I was just saying, I'm trying to think of one. I would one, be with you on that, absolutely. And I can't. I mean, there are some slug. that I would put slug for slug. I mean, you know, things like. Like Slug of the Ring, I uh, would say. The Ring. I mean, going yeah. way, way, way yeah. back, I think that The Magnificent Seven, the sure. original 1960 Magnificent Seven, is a glorious Western um, riff on the Akira Kurosawa movie. You know, that's like sure. ancient, yeah. ancient history. All of you, including I, myself, were zygotes when that movie was And I, I, I do agree with the, the Ring. I think the the American version of the Ring is uh, very strong. Is I like very it better strong. than the original. I, I think it would whatever we see first. I think, I, yeah, I, to be fair, I, yeah, I saw the American version of the Ring in the theaters first. Um, and so it, it packed more of a wallop for me than, than when I finally saw Ringu. Uh, but I still enjoyed... Ringu, Ringu, I just, yeah. uh, uh, I liked the Pacific Northwest as a setting for it. I actually thought that Places translated. You know and see. Yeah, like, yeah, well, and, and and even just the the way they color tinted everything in that kind of blue, green, gray. Yeah. Now incredibly so used. <laughs> yeah. but, but at the time, exactly. it was very, very effective. Uh, yeah, I saw the movie and then I immediately went and watched it again. Like, I, the yeah. same night. I went and bought another ticket and went right back in for the next showing. My but, ring. <laughs> I remember we rented it on demand. I think it was, let's see, it was 02 when it came out, right? Yeah. So I was nine. Yeah. I convinced my parents to do it, and I, I really liked it. But I, I it, as a whole, I'm hard-pressed to think of very many movies where the original is not superior. And the I mean, vanishing? In, in, <laughs> in some cases, part of it is that, I, I, you know, if something's made a number of years later, your yeah. your special effects could be more effective. But in general, when it comes to storytelling, when it comes to, uh, I don't know. I find it weird for at least this case. Uh, I set the way for a second, so I'm sure exactly what you're talking about, Force Majeure versus the, yeah, versus Downhill, is that so much of Force Majeure is about 
like looks and yeah. moments and it's small stuff that you're almost not entirely sure it is actually a comedy. Yes. Uh, and in putting in much as I do like Will Ferrell and I like Julie Louis Dreyfus, uh, they're much broader <laughs> actors that they are than, yeah. than the, no, than the movie is. Subtlety is not what either weird. of them is known for. Uh, so they seem like an odd fit for this. Uh, they're also going to add in a bunch of slapstick to a yeah. movie about a family falling apart over this thing and people misunderstanding and this and that. They could have picked comedic actors who are known for being subtler actors. Yes, more cerebral presence. Yeah, and, and I would have been a little bit more open to the remake at least then because uh, I... I try not to completely discount movies that are remakes, period. Yeah, yeah. But when you're remaking a foreign language film, I feel like... I need to know why. Why are you? Why do you feel like you need to do this? And if the answer is, it's the only way I can get an American audience to view it, that's not the right answer. Yeah. If the answer is, we want to do something to it that we think... It makes it more American. It yeah. It more American. Well, again, it, and that's it sort it of what I feel like from... with, with The Ring. I was like, at least... They said it in the Pacific Northwest. They made some very specific choices about... I was like, all right. I, yeah, it's not like John no. Wayne as a uh, fucking um, Genghis, Genghis Khan. Khan. <laughs> yeah. Um, or even, I mean, you know, the Let the Right One In. That, for me, was a very bizarre There was no remake. point in that. I like the remake. I like the remake, but, yes. but that's because but I liked the original. It's it basically the same thing yeah, in English. Is it is solid. Yeah. yeah. It's one, well, it's a classic example. I think one of the other things that I thought of was the first of the... Um, girl with the you know dragon, girl with yeah, the yeah. dragon tattoo. Mm-hmm. I saw that film before I had seen any of the miniseries, and I yeah. thought, wow, this is really good. And then when you see that installment of the miniseries, it's like, oh wait, yep, it's the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This would be better if the other one didn't exist, but exactly. it doesn't really. Yeah. And that's so that's what that's what yeah. let me in versus let the right one is. But yeah, I haven't even seen Parasite, but I really don't want to see it in. Made for. I don't think it would translate. I don't think it's going to translate. I can't. Because it'll probably end with like them singing "Proud to Be." Well, there's American. just there's just some elements to it that I I feel like are very much. I I, I cringe as to how they're going to make it American. Yeah, because without being really on the nose. Yeah, sort of I'm trying to be vague for people who haven't seen. Uh, well, because yeah, like, you don't want to spoil it, but I I really cringe as to how they're going to translate that to an American audience. Very good point. Uh, shall we move on to February 21st, where it also has a stack. There's a lot of movies coming out this, this God, time. I know. Uh, so we're going to start with the horror one, as I as I tend to. Uh, February 21st has the much-delayed, this is something I've said often, much-delayed movie, of Brahms, The Boy 2. I can't which believe this is going... the third fucking time. I can't believe it's going to theaters. I honest to God can't believe it's going to theaters. <laughs> Katie Holmes, I'm assuming, I haven't is the seen only the trailer, reason that they're like, but... uh, maybe. Man, how much does she want to do a movie? <laughs> but that's... I'm sorry. That's mean. I'll pick up. Yeah, sure. I'll play a role. I'll, I'll pick up. Uh, essentially, replacing the 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 girl who quit The Walking Dead too early. <laughs> I can't remember her name right now. But, no. uh, yeah, well, it's because because she quit Lauren The Walking Cohen. Dead too early. Um, <laughs> Did she go back or something? She's I don't supposed know. to go back. Oh, is she? I haven't watched the season. I don't know. Me neither. I, I mean, I remember when I saw the first one, and within. I don't know. As soon as they showed the the uh, speaker systems all over the house, he's I was in like, the walls. "He's in the walls." I watched Housebound. I know what this is going. I know. Yeah, no, that was what I was thinking. I was like, "I'm seeing Housebound." He's seven years old now, too. I know where this is going. <laughs> I, I saw it by myself when I first saw it, and I'm like, I, "I was." God, I was in a theater. And I was mostly by myself, and I was about 20 minutes in. I'm like, "Oh fuck, he's in the walls." Isn't he? <laughs> he's a <like>, real guy. <laughs> And I haven't seen the new Damn. trail works. I'm pretty sure the trail probably gives away everything. Oh, I'm this, sure it does. It doesn't directly give away. I'm sure, sure I can figure things out. Yeah, I mean, so I, that's why I'm like, I'll wait and watch. The it movie. tells you that the boy is still alive <laughs> at what? the end of the movie. Well, he's no. the dog. <laughs> this, <laughs> what? No. So uh, I will watch this eventually. I'm interested. I, even the <sighs> shitty looking things that come out the same day. Um, I'm actually interested. In I mean, here's the thing again. The, it's horror and theatrical, so it will get. Yeah. And I have Regal Unlimited, so <laughs> my, sure, my, I'll it'll go get my A list because it's yeah. horror. It's like I'm already too behind. I'm tr- I'm going to try to keep up with the horror releases as they come out. Yeah. Grudge, I think I can pass on. I do want to see Underwater, and yes, honestly, yeah, yeah, I'll see this. Remember, we all saw the fucking Prodigy. Same that weekend, happened. the year previous. I keep forgetting that, that happened. Yeah. And it's around the same same release. Yep, because that was February of last year. Um, also coming out that day is the new version of Call of the Wild with yeah. Harrison Ford and oh, a CGI dog. Oh, Jesus fucking <laughs> Mary and motherfucking Joseph. What in the <laughs> fuck? 
<laughs> this is where I get into a Cody level fucking rant. This is amazing. What the motherfucking holy sheep shit fuck is that fucking CGI dog with the fucking CGI button eyes <laughs> alongside Harrison fucking Ford? Can you really? Can you not get a fucking dog to do this fucking movie? I can't because I saw Togo and Togo has like two dozen. What the it. motherfucking <laughs> sheep shit? Go see Togo what instead. The shit. I just I saw I I saw the first fifteen seconds of this trailer and I was like, what the fuck? I we saw this in in front of in front of cats and I turned to Lauren. I, and I go, well, what the fuck? The CG in Cats has been better than this. And right? then I and then I look and I later then I'm like, I know, this I'm Han like... Solo movie looks lit. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about this movie is the meme I've seen of like when you think you've been traveling around with with your uh, with your with your Wookiee friend for two decades and then the the buzz wears off and turns out you're around Alaska with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Or something like that. It's just I better just, I, than I really, that, you know, it just really, I mean, my heart sank a little because I almost thought that in addition to being like the dude who was like all these iconic characters in all these Spielberg and, and Lucas movies in the 70s and 80s or whatever, I also think that on a good day, Harrison Ford is a legit great character oh, yeah. actor. He's yeah. a great old school character actor. And to see him... Fucking around with a fucking CGI dog. All it needs is like that that dog narration. <laughs> Thank God it doesn't. Actually, this is what we better. call it actually might be better. a paycheck <laughs> movie. Oh hell's yes, you know. I just I just really I just was like actively, I I felt my gut lurch when I saw this. I mean, trailer. on the one hand, I understand in using a CGI animal. Especially I after, don't. Um, I don't. No, I do because uh, dogs' purpose actually, you know, hurting a couple dogs. Yeah, there, there there's been a lot of concern okay. um, with with movies where you're using animals for live stunts, like you would need for Call of the Wild. You are putting. Well, then animals- let's CGI the stunts and have a dog do the regular close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't disagree. But I also I will say that after there has been a number of accidents on film sets with animals i understand True. why they are and it's also cheap not to mention well, have you ever seen those like animals gone wrong on the set like when scooby-doo fucking ripped out matthew lillard's throat <laughs> oh man <laughs> but no i mean it, it is a uh, there are there are some advantages of you don't have to have as many dogs you don't have to train them you don't have to worry about dangerous stunts yeah but i think the cgi about... at some point has to be there and why the fuck are they maybe doing before this? Maybe before the movie's done, it'll, it'll, it'll look better. Yeah. But or maybe it'll There's be... No, maybe you can see the dog's no. ring hand, like Judy Hand. Did. <laughs> see that? I would watch. But <laughs> like, on the plus side, the, the guy who directed this, you know, wrote and directed Leo and Stitch, and... I How love Leo and Stitch. How to Train the Dragon. He, he wrote the three movies. He wrote the wine game. What Which are all like, animated. He's, he's done good... Animated movies. movies. before. So what they yeah. need to do... Uh, what they need to do is, um, I forgot what they need to do. I'm sorry. I just, they I had it and then I lost it. watch Togo instead. <laughs> they need to watch Togo I just, instead. I, I'm sorry. No. You need a, you need an actual being for the actor to interact with. Oh, I remember what they need to do. They need to hire Andy Serkis, uh, to play. That. <laughs> that would be fun. They'd probably be all right. Then. I'd be down with that. See? That would be cool. Because at least the dog would have good moments. Exactly. And maybe the dog would be huddling around its he'd be huddling around its bowl. He'd commit to it, man. He'd commit to it. I just I I, it just seems so at this point in time, I agree. I think we're just not at that point technologically. I think everyone who sees this everyone there were when I saw this trailer in a theater, people Uh, tittered. Yeah, because it's when they got to the dog. It's just horrible. It is so misbegotten and awful, it's not even funny. If they're going to go that route, it's a little funny. Then make well, it's it's a lot funny in the wrong kind of way. If you're gonna go that route, then make a fucking science fiction movie, and and make make you know all the wild meets Planet of the Apes. Thank you, you know, so. make 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 the dog into like some weird you know eight legged thing and just like <laughs> totally fucking fall on, you know. Or don't thing. pretend like it's a real dog, you know. And I, Harrison Ford looks so fucking dyspeptic in every shot with that fucking CGI Gosh. dog. <laughs> uh, he's just sitting there going, okay. He's Fox. like going, okay, okay. Plane paid off. Boat paid three quarters away off. Condo paid off. That's what's going on in his head as he's like frolicking with the fucking CGI dog. He owes Fox a movie, and and here it is. 
Amen. Uh, well, good on you, Harrison. So then uh, also that week, uh, we have a couple other releases. Uh, <laughs> something actually I'm I, oddly enough looking forward to is much as I don't like Jane Austen, uh, <gasps> Emma. Emma! Wonderful. I, I love Jane Austen. And Anna Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy, Mia Goth, uh, Bill Nye. You have mm-hmm. such a great cast. Bill Nye, the science guy. The other Bill Nye. <laughs> I'd watch that one too. I love to see, unlike Bob, I love Jane Austen. See, I, I actually hate Jane do too. Austin, I, but <laughs> I think I think that Jane Austen Bob. is great. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck you, Bob. We'll, we'll say fuck you on that. I Yeah, I just, I, there was never a better observer of social commentary mm-hmm. filtered through a pre-feminist lens than Ms. Jane Austen. And I, um, Hollywood, for the most part at least, I should say film in general, Hollywood specifically, have done pretty okay by yeah, Jane not, Austen not overall. Terrible, not terrible, not so terrible. And so I'm... Yeah, I'm I like Lewis, I like Elder op- Emma, uh-huh. I like op- Lady Susan. I'm, op- I'm optimistic about this one. I like Colin Firth emerging from the lake. <laughs> well, who does? Does he emerge from a lake in Emma, in the new Emma? Bill uh, Nye does. That's uh, good. Uh, Listen, I just can't. He, I'm he, in he for still it. Davey, Davey, Davey I'm in for it. <laughs> I can't I'm wait fine for, with uh, it. Kevin Smith to direct his first uh, Jane Austen movie. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Imagine who sits at disability. No, come on. <laughs> come on, say it, say it. Fuck on. you, Cody. <laughs> Yeah, but like Anna Taylor Joy Tradition is such a great actress, observed, thank you. and it's it's weird to see her and Mia Goth in something that isn't horror. That's true. Because usually the majority of things I've seen both of them in are horror films. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder if Emma halfway through should turn into a Lovecraftian monster. Hey, <laughs> I just forget. You can only hope. I forgot she was British. Yeah, Anna Taylor Joy. Mm-hmm. Oh, she is. Okay. I don't know. I was guessing because everybody else was. So she's from Miami. So. Oh, she's not British. All right, uh, well, there you go. Yeah. That's her why mother is Spanish, African, English, and her father oh. is Scottish, Argentinian. Ah, Scottish. Scottish. Does she get away with that Scots in there? But if she is not, her accent in the movie looks fine. I was going to say, so. though, it's, it's at least from yeah. what I've seen in the trailers, it seems exactly. fine. Uh, yeah, the, the movie itself looks quirky and fun and, and a good take on, on the... And it's written and directed by women. Uh, written by... Yeah, it is! And directed by On the Wild. Both of which don't have a lot of credits to their name, but I think it's her first. It's never it's stopped any man before. She did a lot of first videos. Movie. So. It's DeWild's first movie. Yeah, her first feature. Yeah, uh, Florence and Machine videos, a couple other things here. Oh. Uh, that so. explains the, uh, at least from the trailer, I I Back enjoyed videos, um, the stylized nature of some of the parts. So. Yeah, and for something, if you're doing Jane Austen, you probably have to do as some sort of. Uh, thing that make it newer, I guess. I don't know. But well, I mean, look at Little Women. Yeah, Little Women was great. Too. It managed to be both modern and yet of the time. Yeah, so I look forward to it. And that is a very hard balance to strike. It so, is, yeah. Kudos. Um, so also that week is uh, Greed with uh, Isla Fisher and uh, Steve Coogan. Looks pretty fun. Um, and then something I do want to mention, my boyfriend's meds. I saw a show from this in front of something, a Black Christmas, because it doesn't match, like, mm. at all. Um... And it looks fucking off. <laughs> uh, but I saw, have you guys seen the trailer for that? Nope. My no. boyfriend's meds, no. Yeah. Uh, seek it out because it's an awful trailer for it looks like a shitty movie. Hmm. Uh, where this is the premise here where a dude is on, he's like, he's every sort of disease that you can find the sim for, um, or five, whatever they're on now. And he forgets his meds and they go on vacation. And he hasn't told his girlfriend about any of them. So he goes wild and crazy, but it looks so awful because it's one of the things you can say easily. Say to your girlfriend, I have these issues, and I have these meds, and I forgot them at the airport. Mm. But no, instead they have to have this giant adventure uh, where he's in all sorts of different crazy moods because apparently that's how people with issue that oh. mental issues act. It's like, oh god, <laughs> it's like a movie got teleported out of 1995. <laughs> yeah, it's earlier. It's a, and it's a Spanish directed by I think has a lot of English actors, Bruce, uh, Brooke Shields, Jason Alexander, etc. And but anyway, I just wanted to mention because the trailer was so awful that I was like. Hmm. Why is this in front of Black Christmas? <laughs> yeah, that is, <laughs> is kind of weird. Because someone's trying to push a movie off. It might be the same um, same production company or something like that. Mm, uh, or that's probably it. That's pretty terrifying. Hey, another, you know, hey, every, every generation needs its weekend at Bernie's, you know? And uh, February 28th uh, also has yet another horror film. Yay! Which we're looking at uh, the update of The Invisible mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Man mm-hmm. from uh, Lee Wan L. Looks good. Looks fucking great, yeah. Looks really good. It I saw looks the, really good. I saw the trailer for that in front of Black Christmas. Looks really fucking good. I really yeah. like Elizabeth Moss, though. Yeah, she's fantastic. Even if she's Scientologist, too. <laughs> oh, she is? she is? Oh, man, don't ruin Elizabeth Moss for me. ask her Moss about, like, about, like can you harsh be, my Moss can mellow, you be man. a Scientologist and still be in The Handmaid's Tale? She's like, oh, I don't see the connection. Fuck. Like, what? 
Oh, I didn't need to know that. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I should know. Go ahead and edit that. <laughs> I'll edit that out of your mind. <laughs> uh, but no, this one, yeah, this update looks really, it looks, of course, nothing like the previous version, but that's fine. Um, no, I, but I think this is a really modern, really interesting yeah. take on it, and I do know a number of women who are a little anxious about seeing it because mm-hmm. of the gaslighting angle. Yeah, and yes. oh, that's going to Ask Jennifer about that of like what it's gonna be. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's kind of one going into. I'm like, this is gonna this could potentially be a really rough watch as, as a woman, uh, but I'm really intrigued if it's done correctly. I think could be a really fantastic movie. I I will say that it's a movie I would have felt a little bit more confident about if they'd had a female director. Yeah, and I agree. Given the subject matter. That is not to say that it's not going to be well executed because, again, my top pick for the year was Midsummer, which is directed by a man. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited. I'm very intrigued. Yeah, and I hope people don't, like... And I'm, I'm at this point where people can talk about, Lee Renault wrote Saw, you can't do anything that's like... He knows what he's doing. He, he knows, knows what horror. He's doing. He knows yeah. character, and mm-hmm. he knows how to write characters in horror. Yeah. Even if I didn't like the last couple of Insidious movies, I think he knows what he's doing. Like, yeah. fucking update was upgrade was one of the best movies of its year mm-hmm. of two years ago. That should have been the Venom movie. Yeah, it's a better. And that's where everyone talks. About. It's like it's a better movie. That, it's a better Venom movie than Venom. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was, but so. Midsummer's a better Venom movie than Venom. Um, I just want to see them. I, I'm just intrigued to see someone who's not a hack doing an update of a time-honored and time-worn premise and and story. Yeah. But so. we all didn't like The Mummy from a few years ago? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that it says Elizabeth Law has a completely different plot means they, of course, now officially canceled the, the Bark Universe. Because originally when they were going to update it, it was going to be Johnny Depp playing the Claude. Oh, character. Jesus but I don't think it had the same... same We've canceled Johnny drops. Depp, so... But this is from... I don't Univ- know. Yeah. He was abusive, too. This is from Universal. So, yeah, maybe... <laughs> this took his actual story. Yeah. What? <laughs> this is the boss face Amber Heard. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, sorry. Topical. Oh. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued, and I have to say, uh, I'm really, really hoping it's it's executed correctly. There's a couple other small releases that same week. I yeah. couldn't find too many trailers. Like, I couldn't find a trailer for St. Francis. Whistler seems pretty interesting, if you guys seen a trailer for that. Burden I couldn't find a trailer for. Ride I couldn't find a trailer for. White, White Day I couldn't find a trailer for. Wait, White Dick? What? White, <laughs> White Day. It seems to be a Scandinavian film of some sort. I have a trailer here for Burden. Okay, found one. Okay, maybe I didn't search hard enough. Um, a couple of times I, I, I look up trailer and I open it up it's like a scene or just a, a foreign trailer. Um, no, I got but, the official trailer. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Maybe I misspelled or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but I do want to say one other thing coming out on VOD at the end of February is Glenn Danzig's Veronica, uh, which was supposed to come out on Halloween and mm, he delayed it a couple months. That's right. I'm sorry, why is Glenn Danzig making a fucking movie? He Because uh, so uh-huh. he is Glenn fucking Danzig. And he's making another one coming out uh, oh, later Jesus. this year as well. Well, he already... Yeah, well... This is Veronica. This is going to be yeah, a fucking... One, he's working on one that Julian Sands is yeah, actually... Yeah, I've ever seen cast. Which is like a day. Western horror movie of some kind. Yeah, this that's is, where the new thing is coming out, yeah. Is this going to be another fucking Fred Durst making... Uh, Apparently, no, no. This played at, I think, Fantastic Fest. I I've heard it's unintentionally hysterical. Uh, yeah, the reviews after it came out were wonderfully awful. And he's like, I'm glad people enjoyed it, but <laughs> I'm really sad they enjoyed it a different way than I did. I heard it, I heard it compared <laughs> to The Room. Yeah, that's why I cannot wait to see this fucking movie. February 25th, if anyone comes out, and I will be renting that the day. I don't care how much it costs to rent it, I will be watching it that day. Um... So I'm looking forward to watching this and putting it as my number one worst movie of the year. Maybe you'll like it. I don't know. Uh, but I'm looking forward to... I, I'm expecting I mean, to it could be a so bad it's good. Yeah. So it's, it's Dude, fanatic, Dinesh cats. D'Souza is probably making a movie this year. That's the good, that's, that'll, that'll be your number one list. Uh, when I cash my birthday present in two months early. And on the 29th is also going to be um, Daniel Radcliffe and Guns Akimbo. Yeah. Which played at a couple festivals last year. He's finally getting a release of some sort uh, where he's forced to play part uh, into this reality show in which he has a couple guns uh, nailed to his hands. Um, and some other people have, like, essentially a battle royale. I don't know all the details there, but I'm also purposely avoiding... He's made some really that. interesting choices <laughs> think, for his project, so I, I, I have to say... Yeah, and I think, that's probably, I, I think there's probably a, a legitimate and a, and a genuine wish to get completely 180 degrees removed from Harry Potter. Well, I feel I like see he's, that sensibility. I feel like he's done that. Yeah, but he's still doing it. 
<laughs> Obviously, but, this is the kind of project. But some people just won't let that go. Like, like, there's a movie coming out around the same time called Escape from Pretoria. So nobody, it's based upon um, uh, South African, but a real story mm. there. I looked it up, but I didn't really go into it further. But all the comments are like, Harry Potter this, Harry Potter that. It's like, uh, oh, for fuck's sake. But I mean, he's never... I, it, He's never going to The live same that way down, that Mark extent. Hamill is never not going to be Luke yeah. Skywalker. Like, or people won't give Kristen Stewart or Robert Pattinson a chance because of the Twilight. But that being said, I feel like he is in this unique position of he doesn't need money. He has all the money he needs from Harry Potter, so, so he, he gets to do, do whatever what the, the hell fuck he wants. He wants. It's the same with Elijah Wood. Yeah. 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 Elijah, Elijah Wood's Wood's like, I took all and my money from the kid chosen and do cool shit. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and does just cool, weird, offbeat stuff. Like, Daniel Radcliffe has done a lot of TV stuff, too, that's been... Uh, there's that, yeah, that show C. Buscemi. Or... Yeah, it's weird and fun. Like, he has done a lot of things... Where you can tell, and he's got the new seasons coming out, and it's done kind of anthology style, and the new season looks actually really fun. Yeah, I haven't watched the show, but I've, I it's, will watch it one day. It's a good time. Uh, I don't know. I, I respect the choices he's made. He, he's done some weird theater. He got naked in Equus. He did Funny Thing Happens. Wait, he got uh, naked? Or no, How to I Succeed forgot. in Business, excuse he, me. Did he get naked and fuck the horse or ride the horse? I forgot. He mostly fucks it. I, he probably yeah. writes it at some point too, but like, no, I, I I appreciate that he is choosing projects he likes because it. I'm a lot more willing to give his movies a chance because he doesn't need the money. He's doing stuff he finds interesting. Yeah, he read you know at uh, but still, like, I can definitely... like I wait farting corpse. Fuck yes, I will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I also do enjoy sometimes though with with Daniel Radcliffe just going Harry Potter, yeah. Harry Potter, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Um, all right, so and then moving into March. Uh, so our last month, finally. Um, kind of starts to slow down a little bit. No, I, I don't have a horror movie for this, for this Which is How dare you? Fucking bullshit. But we do have one with monsters and fantasy with uh, right. Pixar's Onward. Oh, it's not Pixar, it's just Walt Disney. Oh, uh, no. No, it's Pixar, Gone. isn't it? I might be, actually. I, I, it's Pixar. Okay. Have you ever just it's seen a Pixar's movie? It's called Pixar's Onward. Okay. I just listen. Yeah, Have I you ever it. just seen a movie that just puts you to fucking sleep in the trailer? No, because that movie. Yeah, a lot. No, of that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, really, I don't like the new trailer, the one they put out recently, but the first trailer for it that kind of get more into the world was really solid. No, uh, the new trailer does not sell it at all. Uh, the first trailer did. Maybe I saw the the second trailer then. Yeah. Uh, the first show goes way more into plot. Maybe it gives away a little too much plot, so maybe they pulled it back with the second one. The second one's more mom-focused, and the first one's more dim-focused. Oh, I saw the one that was more mom-focused. Okay, okay that, the trailer does not work. Okay. The first trailer makes it is a much better... Because I'm like, what the fuck is this? Maybe uh, I'll give the first trailer yeah, a try. Yeah, well, actually, when I saw that second trailer, I'm like, are they assuming everyone who's seen the first trailer, as, as seen the se- who's watching the second trailer, has seen the first trailer? Because I would be completely lost watching this one on its own. So yeah, find the first one, and it's longer, and it's made more of the plot, and looks sets it more of that world. Um, but I think it looks really interesting. Looking at a, a fantasy D and D type world, when it's more modernized. Mm. I was trying to see if it was snowing. I don't think it is. Because people keep posting pictures of snow, and I'm like, Seattle, huh? but there's people who are Seattle adjacent. <laughs> I demand enough. snow. If everybody else gets it, I want it. I'm sorry. I completely interrupted things, but I... No, uh, what are your, do you have thoughts on, on Onward? Eh. <laughs> yeah. I saw the trailer. I don't remember anything about it. Yeah. That's my thoughts. <laughs> I definitely saw the trailer. They're uh, uh, blue, right? Yeah. I don't remember uh, where it has uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. Oh, it's because of Chris Pratt. I don't like him. Playing, uh, He's a tool. Yeah, Chris playing Pratt brothers, is a tool. like yeah. ogre play brothers who try to bring back their dad, and they have to. Go Chris to Pratt is be oh yeah, Chris Pratt is becoming one of those. Oh, he's in that. I don't want to see it anymore. Yeah, he lost energy over time when he when he joined that crap which he's part of. Um, well, there's that. Yeah, well, that's a big part. And he's of it. also kind of a he's tool. a tool. Yeah, Thank the you. word you're looking for is tool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, so also that week is uh, a, something that has an interesting title. So I checked out the trailer for. Yeah, is it first cow? First cow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it'll do well. That is indie, that is indie high concept. Well. I will yeah. watch the fuck out of First Cow. No idea what it is. All we need is H24 what is it? to get me in there. It's uh, about teen girls in rural Pennsylvania. Yeah, at the time of... Uh, I don't know if it'll be a good A24 expansion. movie because it sounds like it might have a happy ending. <laughs> oh, well. And I don't, think, I don't think any A24 movie needs should have a happy ending. There's as, something uh, wrong <laughs> with the continuum of the universe if you see an A24 as movie. As they talk about ending. on Change Eons where they're all trying to find... 
Do the they? one with the yeah, that's a continuing uh, oh. thing of, of oh, that's Kelly right. and Vanessa yes. watching movies. Yay, hey, Vanessa! With you're so right. Going to have a happy ending. <laughs> but I thought uh, that Lady Bird kind of had a happy ending. Yeah, mostly. I don't know. Like this is an interesting debate. A twenty four is happier, but she wasn't on the all everything. Uh, yeah, everything Lady wasn't Bird great, is, but was, she was on the right track yeah. for the future. Mm-hmm. She was, but even if her relationship with her mom was kind of broken at that point. Yeah, but that yeah. mom was kind of weird as shit. But it's honest. But anyway, that's a whole movie from two years ago. Uh, first Cow, however, <laughs> is definitely an odd movie of the first cow in Pennsylvania territory. It's about the president of, uh, marrying a cow. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> is it our president? But we did pass up First Lady earlier on. Well, I want to say a First Lady looks... It's about a woman trying to get herself to be married to Corbin Burnson. And it looks <laughs> fucking awful. But First Cow looks great. <laughs> I would rather marry the cow than Corbin Burnson. Hey, so like the cat came out. Um, also that week, uh, as movie I have absolutely no interest in, uh, but I mentioned here, The Way Back with uh, Ben Affleck, and it's a sports movie about him coaching a college bat- or college or high school basketball team to get Ass. themselves back to work. Well, I do apologize. <sighs> Unfortunately, I have a date with jumping off of a building rather than do that. Pass. <laughs> Who directed it? I'm curious. Do you have um, the way Back is... Pass. <laughs> Some you watch it, it'll be a fucking woman. You'll be like, oh, now I have to go see it. Motherfucker, I would too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part. It's like, that's why I was looking for that. I, I looked up the director of that that documentary about the human trafficking. I'm like, what is wonderful woman? Gavin O'Connor. O'Connor. Yeah, because you know I'd have to Who? see it then. Gavin O'Connor? Nope. I think Gavin O'Connor. Uh, he directed The Accountant, which I never saw. Oh. Double pass. Um, he's doing The Green Hornet. Super uh, pass. Jane got a gun. Pass to the 10th degree. Jane ain't got a uh, no. Warrior. And Miracle. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm still passing. Uh, so, yeah. that. Uh, so, moving he on. He also directed The Lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, March, March 13th is a whole time for Cody. Because there are two Christian movies coming out. Pass! Let's see. There is I Still Believe... <laughs> And Roads Not Taken, I think, is the other one. Yeah. Yeah. What about Scott fucking Harvey? Inside the Rain. Damn. Inside the Rain is the other one thinking of. Are we sure Deerskin isn't yeah. one? No, Inside the Rain is, isn't isn't the isn't the Christian. Well, oh, See, yeah. the thing is, is that all these titles could be A Quiet Place. That could be. Oh no, no, it was uh, it was I still believe, and then I thought a Never Rarely Sometimes Maybe Boogaloo. Always was Electric going to be, and then it wasn't. So I do take it back. So there's one Wait, at least. Did we uh, I, I couldn't find a trailer for Road Not Taken, so I didn't watch it. It's the true life story of Christian music star Jeremy Camp and his journey of love, loss, and l- that looks to prove there's always hope. Pass. Well, oh, I do apologize. It's uh, directed by a woman, Kim. It's directed by Shannon Smith. Christian woman, pass. <laughs> it's not even directed by a woman. I don't think I just made that up to try to make you see it. Christian woman, pass. It's funny, but, like I watched the show earlier today. Uh, no, it's by two guys, oh, John and Andrew Irwin. <laughs> oh, a few minutes ago, who directed <laughs> I can only imagine October Baby and Mom's Night Out. <laughs> So Pass. Roe vs. Wade is one of those anti-abortion movies. I'm still waiting for that Roe vs. Wade movie to come out. Maybe one day it will. I really, really want John Voight, we need you. John Voight, we need you. Said no one ever. <laughs> oh, I, got, I watched him in something the other day. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing in this? Um, but, uh, yeah, that looks... I watched it over that day. I'm like, the point of being is like, he stands up and tells his girlfriend, like, we went through a bad time today, but we still pray for her. I'm like, is he going to make her sing? And are we going to have Lady Gaga moment? I <laughs> know. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I do apologize because um, never, rarely, sometimes, always is an abortion drama that I thought was going to be a Christian movie. And it wasn't uh, as it went further because um, it's focus features. And it has, actually has a real cast behind it. Um, Lame. <sighs> Lame. But Inside the Rain looks god to awful. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. Is that. that the one with? Is that the one that has Javier Bardem in it? No, that's Road Ooh. Not Taken, which I don't. Oh, like see that, that 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 it just got more interesting for a second. I looked at the Road stopped. Not Taken, but I couldn't find a trailer for it. But also, it didn't look really hard. Um, <laughs> if I if it turns out I can find it real quick, then. And then My Spy is finally coming out that week. Yeah, I've been delayed a couple times. I was already. gonna say, wasn't that supposed to come out a few times? Already? Uh, it was supposed to come out last last. Uh, July, but it was too close to Stuber, so they pushed it back to January, uh, and then from January they pushed it back to March. That's not a good sign. It's the same trailer every time. Yep. Mm-hmm. So either it's a good sign or a bad sign. I don't know. Maybe this is everything that works in the movie, so we're not going to show you anything else. Or I think that's at this point because at this point they should have a new trailer if they're playing delaying it four yeah. times. <laughs> and then uh, Bloodshot. 
Bloodshot, yes, which I can't decide looks good or not. I think it looks awful. It's the start <laughs> of the Valiant universe, which uh-huh. Valiant has some decent characters. I don't know if Vin Diesel was the right one to play Bloodshot. We're about to fucking find out. I though. haven't read anything from I've that, read so. little bits about them. I don't know if Vin Diesel was the right fucking guy to play Bloodshot. I, from what I've seen, it requires somebody with a range. And you think so that might not have been Vin a good Diesel idea for Vin Diesel range. to play Bloodshot. Come on, Vin Diesel, point A to point A minus every time. I think my cat farting has more of a range. Oh come on, Tilly. Tilly, let rip with one. Look at let's, that. Look at that face. That. She's Aww. she's ranging right now. They have a weird. Placeholder for untitled Bloomhouse film on the fifteenth. Ah! I don't have anything to say on mine. I think. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm blo- uh, Project Five from Universe. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's gonna happen. That. I don't. That's, think a, it is. that's a Sunday anyway. Uh, so, oh, um, yeah. Uh, moving on, I guess. Yeah, I mean, really, what can you say about Blood? Ooh. Bloodshot is such a. The Valiant Universe is one of those ones that's a hard sell because all of the characters are kind of esoteric in a way. Like, you know, there's a... Oh, fuck, what's that? Man, Man of War, and he's a fucking Roman in a like a weird Iron Man suit that landed in there. But yeah, I saw the trailer for Bloodshot, and I was in for a while. Oh, nice. It's and then, in Redmond. It, then it lost me. Like, it's one of the shows that probably should have cut itself off about halfway through it. Because the more they show, the dumber it looks. Yeah. <laughs> they give me the setup, and then stop. But they give you setup, and they show you the setup a couple more times, just in case you don't get it. And it just kept going. Um, on the 20th... Uh, on the 17th, there is a I Am St. Patrick movie, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. That's from Fathom Events. It looks like a Christian flick. Fast. Not fast. Uh, but the March 20th uh, has The Quiet Place Part 2. Electric Boogaloo. Mm-hmm. Yes. Electric Boogaloo. Like, that I'm in place, for. Sorry. That I'm in for. Uh, apparently it's a trailer for it. I haven't watched yeah, it yet. Yeah, there's uh, two trailers. Well, I've, there's the little tiny, I've tiny I've seen the teaser, teaser trailer. Yeah. There's uh, a proper says, trailer. But I haven't seen the proper trailer. I saw it during... Um, Grudge showed it. Mm. Uh, I saw that Grudge showed the, the teaser again. But. It's it it looks intriguing. Yeah, I look forward to it. Like the last one was a major hit, and mm-hmm. it was really clever and really I, well I'm, done. I'm interested to see because I feel like that movie wasn't really written to have a sequel. It wasn't, but. I wonder I'm if it's going to like, pull like aliens and go like completely over the top like action film. You know? I wish or re- I hope it's not repeating the last one. So See, that's the thing is like it. they also they said it was going to be different characters. Now it's the same family again, and I'm like, I wish that they would have expanded the universe. Yeah, that'd have been cool. Like to, like something else going like one because you saw those other lights out there. Like, what are they? Yeah, what what are, what are their stories? Mm-hmm. Like, when the Cloverfield came out, they said they're going to do that. We're going to sell. Well, we have had a bunch of independent Cloverfield movies, but when the when the first Cloverfield came out, they, they announced that like we're going to show what the military is up to at the same a same attack, and that didn't then that come up of use. And yeah, I like, that'd I'm be a great idea. I like to bummed out of what happened with Cloverfield. I liked Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, oh, I thought it was great, but it also Paradox that wasn't a fucking man. Cloverfield movie. That was a movie that they're like, oh, we're just going to stick Cloverfield onto it. Which I wasn't angry for, about it. And hey, for a while, over for the, uh, Overworld, Overlord was supposed to be a Cloverfield movie. They said, no, it's not. And oh, what? I heard rumor at some point that Underwater really? was attached and then moved on, but this is a different company, so I don't think that was true. <laughs> this is starting to sound like slowly but surely something that is an all-purpose rumor mill for everything. Yeah, co- everything is Cloverfield. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you, you know that Cloverfield. remake of Emma... Was going to really be Cloverfield. There's also something called Deerskin, which is coming out, uh, oh, which yeah. is a comedy horror corner list. But I didn't. Yeah, that was a, that was a Cloverfield movie too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's uh, the climb, which I actually watched show for and looks really funny. Um, looks like a character comedy. I care not for your bullshit comedies, Bob. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and there's one more week <gasps> in March. Yay! And uh, I know what Kim was saying before. Uh, Kim, go ahead. Tell us what's coming out at the end of March that you're looking for. I'm looking for St. Maude. No! Actually, I'm looking for that too, but it's okay. Mulan, motherfuckers! Live it is the only live action Disney movie Sorry, I have I will, any I, desire to absolutely, see. Absolutely. I will want because I think I mentioned to you when yeah. we watched the trailer when we were at uh, Rise of Skywalker. I, I like. <sighs> rage and rage and rail against the dying of the light over anybody doing frame for frame live action remakes of fucking Disney movies. Get some fucking originality people. That said, I saw the trailer for the Mulan live action and I was like, whoa. 
This, this looks, looks like a movie movie. It, it looks, looks like, like it actually will be served. Like there, one I do appreciate part of the reason why it's going to work is they are not keeping it a musical. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Which is up to note, like the the first one quit being a musical when they found the dead, when they found like the bodies, like, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. like the song literally stopped like halfway through the song, mm-hmm. and then they never sang again. There it was a dead. it was a lighter musical Funny too. Deals. Um, although. I do regret a little that we don't get Donny Osmond singing how he's going to make a man out of us. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm so... Mm, I'm so stoked for this. It is it is literally the only I live action I cannot believe Disney. they are not putting Mushu in the movie. Thank God. Another reason why I'm really excited about it is they're not putting Mushu in the movie. I didn't know. <laughs> no, what I love, like, at least from the trailers, everything I've seen, it's like they're almost acting like there was an original Mulan. Like, it's mm-hmm. the main, a lot of the main issues with the previous ones, like, hey, you remember the thing you loved as a kid? We're remaking it. This mm-hmm. one's like, there couldn't, if there wasn't a 1995 Mulan, this movie would probably just seem exactly the They're same taking way. the story, which, to be fair, was a... Real story. Yeah. A real story. And, and they and, justified, but... <laughs> right, well, yeah, but but they're live-actioning it. And, um, I think that... Maybe that like I I'm not gonna lie I've not seen I haven't been able to get through any of the live action ones for good reason they're not good they're are I'm sorry they're awful uh, yeah they're not good um, you gotta watch Dumbo Man for the bad kid acting and I Michael Keaton the but worst see, here's kid the acting of all fucking I don't time. want to <laughs> I just don't I life's too short life's too short. Even with even with unlimited movies, there's some shit I, suffered, I still won't so see. So you shall as well. <laughs> uh, you took me to see that god awful ah. Christian movie. That's suffering for and a I'll year. And I'll be cashing in another one next year. You sh- I'm gonna make y'all see gonna, something. For might my have birthday, to shut man. down the city of Geek by your birthday next year <laughs> and oh, bring it back up again come Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah. Man. laughs> no, I, I am legit really really excited about I this. I am too, and I am like mm-hmm. the last human being on the planet that should be excited about this because again I have railed to the high heavens against all of these live action Disney remakes I think they are hideous cynical cash grabs I think there is no redeeming social aesthetic artistic or uh, moral value to them whatsoever that said this looks like it's being done right and this is one of my favorite Disney movies um, well, and also in all fairness, it's it's one of the few of these Disney like animated you know Nick's adaptations, sincerely flattering whatever um, that actually feels like the basic premise in the storyline is made for an actual feature film and not a Disney yeah. cartoon. Yes, uh, and so directed I'm, by a woman and directed by, by him. Hey, yeah, hey hey, uh, Nikki Caro is directing uh-huh. from a script by Amanda Silver and. Uh, Rick Java, so uh-huh. uh, male and female writing. Right but, the hell on. Uh, Elizabeth Martin and Lauren Hynek. So we have th- four scre- screenwriters, three which women? Fuck yeah. You so, know, they should do next is to take live action Disney movies and then make them animated. <laughs> It's like how they made hairspray the tennis shoes. into they I made hairspray that. into a the movie hairspray into a musical, and then they made the musical hairspray into a movie. <laughs> And producers and the other ones. Yeah, but producers, the movie was bad. Yeah, I kind of like it. It was bad, Bob. It was awful. I need to. I haven't watched it again like twelve years. Ago. It's so. I've only seen the Mel Brooks bad. I have zero interest Ula in seeing Thurman, in man, she she's bad not bad good. And uh, Ula is. I'm too busy getting laid to see that movie. <laughs> it came out when you were like eight. I'm gonna say. Um, and then the other movie from that, uh, from the end of March is another A24 horror mm-hmm. film. So the one that a lot of people will love and a lot of people fucking hate, uh, St. Maud. Yeah. Uh, which looks deliciously fucked up. It looks awesome. Uh, starring, uh, Morphe Clark, who, uh, brand new on the scene, but she, she's amazing everything I've seen her in so far. She's in the new Dracula. Um, and she's also it's in, um, his Ooh, Dark and it's got And it's got Jennifer Ellie, who played Lizzie in the original, um, well, not the original, but the definitive, um, late 90s version of Pride and Prejudice. Ooh, nice. <gasps> I love her! I love her, too. <gasps> Colin Firth, rising from the lake with his shirt sticking to him. Oh, Morta Phil Corks also going play, um, Gladriel in the New Lord of the Rings show. So, mm, yeah, well, she's, there you she's go. coming right on up. We got uh, she's in Grawl last year too. Um, does anybody know about Rose Glass, the director's career thus far? No, I don't. Do you? I have no knowledge okay. whatsoever. Uh, yeah, but that trailer was just knocked me off my feet. Yeah. Um, 
It looks incredibly, wonderfully fucked, and I cannot wait. It's all shorts for this, besides, uh, yeah, nothing but shorts. Maybe I'll seek them out, maybe they'll be outlined. Um, but this is the first thing she's written and directed as a feature. Um, but yeah, I, I look forward to other people hating this movie. <laughs> wow, I love it. Um, so yeah, St. Maud looks great. I don't have anything else in my VODs after after February. My The, the site that I use for VOD releases kind of like dries up, dried up after that. Mm-hmm. So uh, maybe just we'll see where things turn out. Um, is there anything else that we might not have covered that someone is that you have interest in and both loving or and or hating that comes out in the next months? Some, I mean, those are most Hulu the big that might ones. Not uh, I mean, there's some new seasons of stuff that are going to be coming out in the next couple months. Um, but that's that's those are all the major movies. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, it looked like a really good slate. Like at least one. There's at least one thing every week that I'm that I'm interested in, if not slightly, as in going you know gaga for. Um, so at least I know I'll be in the theaters for everything. Thank you, A-List, or uh, Regal in your case. Woo! Um, but yeah, we got a lot of horror, which is wonderful. Like Almost like every week has something horror, if not theatrically in the VOD. And stuff that looks good, of course. Yeah, there I'm always like, is a lot of horror. Like I still have like 112 things on my list, because I keep dragging everything coming out. Um, I, have 100, I have like 112 things that came out the uh in some form in horror last year that I haven't seen. And I've, I've watched like 90. <laughs> so, but uh, but what's coming out so far looks pretty decent. There's not a lot coming out that's like, ugh, no. <laughs> the Boy 2 exists. Oh, there's that. But, it yeah. does. <laughs> but like, stuff like Rod, uh, Gretel and Hansel looks great and you know, we'll see how the turning turns out. But. I'm still waiting for my Prodigy 2 up in here. <laughs> one day you, you'll get your uh, you know, Calm Mini. Or Calm the other one. Colin Fior. Colin Fior, yeah. Colin Mean is the one from uh, Leaves 6 9. <laughs> There's a calm before the storm. <laughs> <laughs> Two calms make one storm. <laughs> Two. Well, well Colm uh, call Mean is in uh, Colm Fior is in Storm of the Century, so. Yeah. Somehow it waits. I'm not going to do the work to figure that out. We, but we, New Means does come out. New Means comes out uh, April 3rd, so very close to our very time. Very close. Just I looked it up. <laughs> but uh, any closing thoughts before we let. Uh, we'll let Jennifer go to go back to work. Whoever <laughs> 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 else I'm listening to. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, man. I, I, you know, if you are someone else listening, let us know. Then we'll that, give you a shout-out as, as well. last time, if you give us a five-star review on on uh, Apple things or share us with a very positive comment. So Cody hey, will make a Grinch porn for you. Or you give me a title and Bob will watch it. I've been trying to or, keep, I've been trying to post up everything. Yeah, that, that first option everybody's gonna go for. Cody will make Cody a will Grinch. make a Grinch porn. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll get my body paints out. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, no. And then uh, I'll I'll dip dry some feathers. Only with <laughs> Well, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Jennifer, and whoever else would be up to it. Um, uh, I, I am Bob. I will guarantee the Cindy Lou will be written to be at least 18. <laughs> okay, good. That was Cody. <laughs> if you need a female director, look elsewhere. <laughs> That's Kim. I'm Kim. The female director. Shut up. She is. Is, is somebody going to, like, rep me? On an intro here, uh, Tony, you, you will be playing uh, the classier one of all of us. You'll be playing the you'll be... half foot pole. <laughs> May I narrate it in a full Boris Karloff voice? Of course. Yes. There we go. Tony right. will narrate the Grinch porn as long as he's Boris Karloff. As long as he's Boris Karloff. <laughs> and we're all Boris Karloff signing off from cityofgeek.com. The Grinch's penis grew three times. <laughs> and Lumhouse, if you need a second female director to add to your roster, I'm available. <laughs> Alright, and uh, like, comment, subscribe, share us, etc., uh, etc. Et Go to cityofgeek.com for everything else that we're working on. Pretty Our YouTube channel, channel. Uh, on Facebook, etc., etc. Um, we love you, and hope you love us. Alright, see you next time. Bye. Bye.